you always talking. Always talking shit, so he wearing them little blue thin joints they get you in jail. Yerp, yep, 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 yep. I know y'all probably be always wondering what the fuck the conversation was before we come live. That niggas just be still talking about. <laughs> I know niggas probably be like, "What the fuck these niggas coming talking about?" But you're in tune with another motherfucking episode, episode of the Always, always talking, talking Shit, shit Show. Podcast. You know, just see if you you always get like you always you know what I'm saying go over it, but I'll be telling you like it works. I like it. It rolls. Yeah, hey, man. Whatever works for you. Whatever floats your boat, bro. Pause. Pause. You, you know? don't like me with that statement. Every time somebody says that to me, I'm like, I feel like you should pause. When just you in say case, that. my nigga. Just in I case. Just floating a boat. Somebody just seems suspect, nigga. You know what I'm saying, bro? It seems sexual. <laughs> Very much so. Like, where did, that term, where did the term float, float, float your boat come from? <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. It had to have been sexual. Somebody had to had a sexual conversation and been like, yeah, you know. This or do you think it you came like- back from the time when niggas was just really smashing around on boats? <laughs> and nigga got spicy with somebody and he was just like, well, whatever floats your boat, buddy. I think it's one of them things like. It's definitely. You know, it's white same, people like, definitely make that shit up. A, I don't it, know it, a niggas have the, a statement the same way. Nigga, you like it, I love it. Essentially, it's the same statement. Got a few of them. Yep. You like it, I few love it. few of them it, joints. You know what I'm about saying? To like that, that basically is telling you, like, nigga, do you, bro? If it's good with you, it's good with me. Nigga, like, <laughs> hey, nigga, what you eat don't make me shit. The, the same you right there. Saying, nigga, same a bunch thing, of bro. Them, nigga, like, hey, that's facts. That's a fact. <laughs> did you, did you watch one, that this one, this one? Oh, that's what you're doing. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that means we want no parts of that shit. Well, that's, but that's, we see that's what, what y'all on over here. Yeah, huh? nah, oh, I see. I look, look, I see what y'all My over only here. Thing with the I see what y'all over here is, doing. I feel like we have covered it. We cover that subject every time a rapper dies. I don't think. See, I think the importance of the TED talk, and we'll kind of get into it. Us, no, we'll get into it. The TED talk. The TED talks to me. What hit hit with his situation is, to, you have to. Hit, some things 
it's important on who the messenger is. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You Who's can't, saying it means something. You can't always be if, if the messenger if a certain message is delivered by only a certain looking people all the time, it's easy to classify them as making excuses. It's easy to attack their message rather than <coughs> dissect it and put yourself in that perspective, right? And, and so when you hear others speak about it, like everything else, like all humans decided that, you know, we maybe we should protect children. Maybe we need child labor laws. That wasn't one particular group of humans right. that did that. Right. All humans was like, you know what? Hey, man. When it started coming to, like, protection you know of who family probably, You know, you know who like probably that. was first, though? Let's be real. It's probably niggas because niggas always know the struggle, the oppression. We always can feel, we well, always no, bro, can be like, if you go through history, I know what you No, feel. but if you go through history, I feel what you're saying, but if you go through history, Eastern European kids and shit like that, motherfuckers in Bosnia and shit like that was going through the same shit that a lot of things that they show us about kids in Africa going through, uh, similar things to the American slave uh, indigenous culture, what they were going through. I'm just talking about oppression and like violence that consumes young children's lives. Like it ain't really that they attacking the kids, but you start dropping bombs on their neighborhoods, nigga. So whatever happens, happens. That type of shit. So what the fuck we're talking about is he sent me a video. We're talking watching a video about a TED Talk white dude asking. We, can, we can't play that. We can play whatever the fuck we want. We should play some. Let's just play some of it. Is there? Do I uh, need to like send it to you in a different way? Cause you texted it to me. That's what I thought about. Yes. What's it? Go to it and tell me what the little cap. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. Let's see. Here we go. You found it. This one's titled Rap Music and Murder. Log into the Facebook and see if we can hear it. Go to our live, actual live stream. Oh, I can finally get to it. Gosh, dang it. Hold on, y'all. I gotta make sure we can even hear this. Y'all can hear this shit. Take it to our fucking live stream. What I know. Fuck? What's going on? It's not taking me to I can switch here. to the fucking page, but you won't take me. See, Facebook, this is the bullshit that y'all be on. Oh, here we go. Got you. Already playing it. Oh, yeah, no. That was interesting. No, I'll get it to play. Give me a second.
Yeah, I just thought it was an interesting uh, perspective. It is. It's irritating me that I can't get it to fucking play. Hold on. And like Dr. Fr- Francis Wilson said, if if there's truly white allies in America, they must tell us what's said in the room when we're not around. And in essence, that's what he did in this. He came to the world's hand now. Thank you. This is me. Uh, 24 years ago this month, uh, I'm 17 years old, um, a senior in high school living in Orlando, Florida, and two weeks uh, after this picture was taken, my life went on a tremendous and uh, continues to be on a tremendous journey. Uh, Two weeks after this picture was taken, I dropped out of my private school in the middle of my senior year, moved to a city outside of Atlanta called College Park, Georgia, and enrolled in ministry school, and it was that time that I got a new nickname, and that nickname is White Mike. Um, now, how I got the nickname White Mike is pretty simple. I arrived at a church. Pull up that shit. Mike uh, to kill each other are black. On the radio, that talk about how I learned a lot of dark things about the nation in which we live. But I also learned that I, being White Mike, specifically the white part, have a lot of power. White Mike has a question today, and that's this. How come when you turn on the radio in Jacksonville, or New Orleans, or Chicago, or Little Rock, the only people on the radio that talk about how great it is to kill each other are black? How come that exists? 15 stations on a dial, go up, go down, the only people on the radio bragging about getting automatic weapons, gunning each other down, are black. This right here is a song. Uh, my pastoral vocabulary won't let me read the title, uh, but I will read this. Catch a young black male not paying attention at the red light with your AK-47, let me see you shoot it. You're a killer, you're a killer, you're a killer, you're a killer black male, let me see you prove it. Why does this exist? I'll take it even further because a lot of time racism exists uh, in what we, in, in what's, uh, we don't know, what we don't see. Where are the white killers on the radio? Where are the white AK-47 shooters? Where are the white drug dealers? Where are the white people on the radio that brag about what it's like to murder witnesses before trial? The truth is they don't exist. And the question is why? Why don't they exist? Do white people not kill people? Do white people not use AK-47s to shoot each other? I mean, we know, do white people not do drugs? Do they not deal drugs? Of course they do. But why is it that it doesn't make it to our mainstream radio? Why is it that we don't hear it hundreds of times a day in th- uh, hundreds of cities across the nation, thousands of plays that say the idea that a black guy would kill another black guy is something to be celebrated, something to be romanticized? And why is it the white people don't do it? And maybe, that, maybe it's because there's no white audience for it. Or maybe it's because it's not really marketable. Maybe because it's not, can't get sponsors. I don't know why it is. Uh, Or maybe it's because it's just not the white man's role. Or maybe when white people get up and talk about being drug dealers and AK-47 killers, maybe it's even sicker than that. Maybe when white people do it, they're accused of acting black. The truth is, in America, black murder is normal. Black murder is normal. The idea that a black man or a black woman would be involved in a homicide, either as a perpetrator or a victim, is so common, so broadly accepted that it basically goes unnoticed. The truth of the matter is black families are affected by homicide at rates of 10 times their white counterparts. There will be more death in the form of homicide involving black people this year than any other form of violence that dominates our national conversation. More than school shootings, mall shootings, mass shootings, workplace shootings, lovers twist, uh, lovers twist that turn bl- violent and bloody, even more than in war and in terrorism, no one will lose their life at greater numbers than black Americans involved in violence. Now, as when you talk about what's going on in one segment of society and somehow tie it to what's going on someplace else. You kind of lose people, they detach. This is our unknowing. Prejudice, discrimination, and racism are not the same. We know prejudice, it exists in human hearts and minds. Discrimination exists in hands and policies, but racism is neither in hearts and minds, nor is it really in policies. Matter of fact, it doesn't take action to keep racism going, it takes inaction. It doesn't take hearts and minds to keep racism going. It actually has to keep things out of people's mind. Racism is like the millstone that churns along in the background. It just goes generation in and generation out and keeps... He had a, the homie had a way more condensed version of it, but the 45 minutes. But you, you 
you have a condensed version of this? Turning out the same generational outcomes. Racism is like the uh, nicotine stains left on the walls after the smoking tenants move out. They take the couch, they take the clock, they take the picture, but the evidence that they've been there still remains. Now, when I speak of black murder being normal, I'm talking about the combination of commonality and palatability. You know, black murder in our country is not only common, it's not only frequent, but it's an idea that we celebrate. It's an idea that we say is, is okay. We actually make heroes and, a, out of the notion, heroes out of people uh, that trivialize and romanticize it. How common is black murder? Well, in some demographics in the United States, it's very common. According to the CDC, they release a report every year called the LCOD, Leading Cause of Death. And every year, it's been this way year in and year out for the past decade, as far back as they list on their site, black males ages 15 to 34, the number one cause of death is homicide. The number one cause of death. For white males, it's number three. And when you hear that, you instantly go, well, yeah, I mean, that would seem right. I mean, I know I hear of black on black crime, or I hear about urban crime. So I guess, yeah, number one to number three, I mean, it's a problem, but it's really not that bad. But the devil is always in the details. The truth of the matter is that if I were to take everybody that dies in, uh, in this year, every black male, 15 to 34, and I brought them into a room, December 31st, said, all of you have made it to the afterlife. And I want to take a quick survey. How, how many of you got here by cancer? A few voices would say, me. How many of you got here by auto accidents? Me. How many of you died of a heart attack on, a, on an athletic field? Me. And I said, how many of you were gunned down by another human being? And half the room would raise their hands. Now, every time I show this information, people always say, well, if it's the number three cause of death for white males, what is the number one cause of death? And without fail, year after year, it's called unintentional injuries, accidents, falling off a four-wheeler, crashing a, a, you know, a go-kart or, or you know, a, a bungee jumping without paying attention to you know, knots and things like that. And so basically, the American story is white kids are dying because they're clumsy and black kids are dying because they're gunned down. Chicago, just like New Orleans, just like Jacksonville, just like Little Rock, how common is black murder? The past three years, there's been about 1,270 uh, victims of homicide, 2012, all the way up to this week in 2014. And of those victims, 64 were white. Now, this transcends the simple diagnosis that we have. Well, it's education, it's poverty, it's family structure. As you study it locally, nationally, as you study it decade after decade, it doesn't follow any of those easy answers. Something much deeper and much darker is at work. How common is black murder? Well, in my entire life, 1973 to 2014, there has never been a year since I've been breathing that blacks have not been overrepresented in homicide. Never been a year that you can go into a morgue and you don't see blacks overrepresented. It's the story of America. It's certainly the story of America in my lifetime. My question is, what will be the first year that we see it a one-to-one -one ratio? I mean, if it's somewhere between seven to one and ten to one now, I mean, when will it be one-to-one? -one? We would consider. I mean, y'all get the gist of what he's saying, but basically the parts that the part that we're talking about tonight is why is it so accepted in music for black people to talk about killing other black people? A point that the white no. dude. Oh, go, go ahead. Get your shit off. Man. That's not what we're talking The video go, you showed no, me, that's go, literally you, the caption get, of it. Get your shit off. Get, get your shit off. Basically, the white, the one part we didn't show, my fucking finger itches. The white dude, um. I don't want to keep on white dude. Um, Michael Smith, what he he says is, you can never go to a record or not a record label. You can never go to a um. Shit, let me check this. Let me see this shit. You can't go to. We can't make music about killing animals. We can't make music about killing white folks. We can't make music about raping women. We can't make music about all these. Different things. We couldn't make music about killing Asians. But if you go to that same fucking radio station and say, well, we got songs about black people killing black people, they're going to be like, okay, it depends. Right. Who's killing the black person? No, right. Right, right, right. I get it. Like. That's what he said, yeah. I, I think, did he, did, they, did he already get that part off in the video? Uh-uh. Okay, well. He, you know, check the video out. It, it's, a, it's a relatively older, older video, but. It's pointed today in the fact that it aged. Uh, it didn't age bad. Well, no, that's that's the thing. Uh, the, the 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 message is still relevant. <laughs> it didn't age um, bad. So like, so Jesus when those Christ. things are like packaged in that way, it's important to not let them die. Um, my whole thing is when I heard it, it just triggered my mind to think of like, man, when did trap music start? When did when did um, what's the what's the new shit drill start, right? And what's the difference? Is that hip hop? Is that a subculture of hip hop? How are we defining Here's it? Here's the thing. I feel let like me, let me go let ahead, me finish. Bad, you just let me. Um, what happens is is 
I, I, I went back, you know, my head. I'm just like, man, well, shit, okay, hip-hop, late 70s. I'm thinking, like, boom. Then I'm thinking before niggas start rapping, I'm like, yo, when you start thinking about the Warriors mm-hmm. and shit like that, I'm like, hmm. You take that from the set, late 70s, that gladiator essence of music, man, that ain't nothing but the the blueprint of what, what cats do now. When, I, when you go back and listen to Wu-Tang and Mob Deep, and shit like that. And it's like, bro, what are these young kids supposed to be rapping about? Because the MCs that was like, it was a time I heard Ty Lib on a clip where he said he had this thing where he would, because he's from Brooklyn, he's from the sty. He he knew Hove and a lot of other cats and shit, and he was getting real money in the industry, right? He had a major deal. He was going platinum. He would pull up in the range. He'd pull up doing the same shit they do. And he said, I kind of sometimes would do it just to show cats like you could do the same. You could have the same shit without rapping that way, without talking about glorify. You don't have to Absolute, only rap absolutely. about that. Right? <clears throat> but what happened to the game? The commons, the, the the black stars, groups like that that used to go platinum. Fuji's for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I can they, tell you. They exactly. literally. I can tell you exactly. Hold on. Those groups have been, you know, systemically orchestrated out of music. You have your anomalies with the Cole, Kendricks, Drakes, Kanye's, you know what I'm saying, Wale's, mm-hmm. Sean's, which sounds like I'm rattling off a lot, but these, that's them. It's crazy that there are anomalies now in the music game that we grew up in. It was common for everybody to have skill. It was and they have, common and they for have their own style. To have bars, their style, their to be cadence. an original artist, right? We're and it's like that wasn't the needle in the haystack was the NWAs. It, well, was it would the, be like it, the, it would it be one group. Raps. So you know the, the the two cup styrofoam cup joint with the lean and the and and a certain type of style with the like you know with the clunked up chains that's short it would be like one artist or a crew mm. that that's what they did because even you know if, what you, saying? if you let if we talk about even the artists that broke the south let's talk about the ghetto boys even the ways that they rapped about the shit they rapped about was still the picture was still painted yeah but you know so, what's unfair when i think about that if you go to every region and listen to the niggas that broke them, mm-hmm. there's a New York or East Coast type. The, but pers- the South, the like South has vibe. never said that they didn't get no, everything. No, wait, no, hold on. Let me, let me land. Always, huh? Let me land. I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. It's not where I'm going at all. I'm not even trying to like be biased. But what I'm, what happens is, is like even if you listen to like old NWA and shit like that, it's it's still kind of the same rap cadence of old hip hop that was sounding. Coming out of New York from that era, the words was different, but it's the, hard. the paint, the vid, like you said, the picture the was being painted different it, right. because you're you're coming from a different perspective. But in time, where we are today, when you get to drill music, when you get to modern day hip hop, everyone has enough history from their region. That's what to it where, was. So that's what it was. So to the where now the originals, the sounds is, of these regions, they have their original sound. They have their own shit now. So the in the beginning is because. Hip hop came from where? New, New York. York. So in those beginning days, it's all gonna be kind of modeled to after go to go off, off of is New Big York. Daddy Kane, Rock, East Coast shit. Yeah, like New York, New York. Yeah. So it's like, all right, well, we're gonna do that, that but our version of it. And and our, well, yeah, and no, our, to our version to of our it. Our version of it. And then the South was like, okay, we're gonna take New York. Well, let me jump in real quick. Down. Not necessarily the West Coast beats because that wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, yeah. What happens right. is we're gonna take because Ice T broke this down beautifully. What happens is we're gonna take the sound that's popping mm-hmm. from our region. Yeah. Ice T and do our Ice-T and do our rap thing. Got him on. rapping was a dude from Philly. Yeah. Well, Ice T is originally East, from New Jersey. Right. So here's my thing: is like the South did. The South's breakout was crazy because what I feel like they did with New York music is they just slowed it down and double time. No, listen to me, bro. And I'm they, not. This is what I'm not trying to do. I'm not trying to get to a the music necessary. Well, I know that's naturally where you're gonna go. What I'm talking about more so is no. I, you got to let me land though. Is what I, like let me you you go ahead, not, go, ahead, go, ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead. Off the like you're like regionalizing. No 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 no. 
What I'm saying is, let's go to where where we think this all changed. What all changed? What do you mean? Where you think like it took a the shift from our our knowledge of the culture when we were bringing up in it was every artist has skill to get signed. You had to have skill. See then, the change that I'm then, trying to focus on is not necessarily the the fact that not, it's not, not as skill. it's not as diverse conscious, no more. It's conscious rap. It's not so it's not as have, di- not as fact that it's not as diverse no more. More so is like how did everything get like murderous and drill? Right, that's like, what you know I'm saying. I yeah. know what you're saying, but I, like what I'm saying is back in our I mean it's all hip hop, but in our era of hip hop, right. everybody had to have. You had to paint pictures. Consciousness so was a part of the foundation. Conscious. You consciousness. had to be. You couldn't paint those pictures without being conscious. Well, poli- well, political social consciousness was ingrained in the fabric of the original right. ingredients of right. hip hop. Exactly. Even when them boys from the West Coast with the Jerry Curls kicked mm-hmm. down the doors and start talking that Fuck the, police, the gangster nigga, rap shit, po- politics, it was still nigga. politically right. driven. Because if you go you know listen what I'm to Fuck the Police, it ain't just about killing police. It's nigga, fuck Man, what Cube, we're Cube, going Cube through. Cube was nigga. a poet. Like, period. For one of the nigga, Cube. Cube was a Cube poet, was bro. Was an East Coast, West Coast nigga. He, no, I won't even disrespect him like that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm Cube, saying Cube. Cube. Oh, go ahead. Cube. He's a West the, Coast Nas, he, he's, bro. He's that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Not he's the a West Coast, Coast West, Nas. but he's the he's the he's yeah, the, he's the yeah, West Coast version, sure. like version of what a, what, what the East, what New York had. Or, and no, Nas, I wouldn't even say. No, Nas. I'm telling you, when Illmatic came Jay-Z out, I would say Jay Z because you know nah, I say Jay Z. Nope. All of Cube's writing credits. No, nah, I'm not saying that. I'm not. That's not what I'm comparing. What I'm comparing is is Illmatic to America's Most Wanted. Mm. I'm talking about that West Coast perspective yep. of a nigga that You're wasn't right. necessarily a gangster. You're right. He necessarily was wasn't known as a hustler. Yep. He probably was somewhere in the middle of all that, had a family structure, right? Mm-hmm. So he knew right from wrong, was articulate, had a low base, was naturally universally educated. He was a Talib. So what, not, what I'm just saying, but before that, before there was a Talib, there was a, well, I mean, a Nas. Sure. Cube, and a cube, I mean, and what I, is a cube, as I let, let me right. land in terms of like what I'm saying is just a comparison of like those two solo records. Niggas from New York City, after in after not necessarily just NWA drop because that was kind of foreign at first, yeah. even though nigga what they were saying hit. So it was just like yo, these niggas is crazy, right? I ain't know Cali was giving it up like that. That's what I was yeah, supposed to hear back. Yeah, because there was no right? West Coast But what happens none. is is like when Cube went out to New York. And was in the studio mm-hmm. in New York, recording with the uh, with Bambada and all them cats, nigga, and and cooking up. Dog, when he came, he he when he made America's Most Wanted, fam, like it it did for the West Coast. The visuals, the the, the like, oh, this is what West Coast niggas is going through. What I think it was written did for Nas and. For for the East Coast, in a from a perspective that hadn't been told, in the sense that no, I'm not a pimp. No, nope. no, I'm not a street legend. All the motherfuckers ain't checking for me. I'm not the flyest nigga in the game. I'm not the hardest nigga in the game. I don't come from the craziest crew. All these other things that landed you before. Right. Nas was just a kid with the backpack, nigga, that was walking to and from the train station, absorbing all this madness, mm-hmm. and had the like perplexity and the, and the skill sets, nigga, to articulate it. In a way that a kid from the suburbs or a kid from down south going through similar things or a kid from the, somewhere else that's not going through that, but it's like, damn, that's what it's like in Queensbridge? Everybody could. Rel- could uh, you felt like you knew right. what it was like to walk through them streets of Queensbridge when you listen to Ill, it was written and that's or where, Illmatic. And here's the thing, and then that's where shit kind of gets scary because that's where like suburban kids and everybody, that's where you got comfortable. Is because they painted a picture of it, and you're like, "I gotta go, nigga." They, they, so it, 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 it drew people to the culture. Yeah, and and it dangerously did because it's like black people are like tigers in the zoo, in the sense of you, we're not first. We're not gonna see that you're coming over here to see what you were heard and being rap about because you want to ingrain yourself in this and you want to feel like you. You're not just a listener, you're a supporter. Right. What I mean by tigers in the cage, you come running up, a bunch of white people come running up to the hood, nigga, we're walking away because what do we think that is? Well, a, a, real, a real life example. King Von and them made Old Block a famous place. 
Historically, it's a place that you don't, no not, suburban don't white person from, from, from the state of Illinois would advise their children to go, their wives, or will go. Let's it's a real. dangerous, going to hold Chicago on, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous hood place. It's a, it's a dangerous hood place, right? So it's the hood. Right. Just like every other hood in the fucking mm-hmm. America. But it got famous. So they had a, a issue where like, I, I seen cats on the live, like look at this shit. They were uplifting the front part of it but not because the city recognized that so many people, yeah, motherfuckers from China, coming to Chicago, to to doing business, Ohio. and being like, oh, yo, driver, take me by the O. Yeah. I got to see that thing. You know, like you seeing these cats, like real hood boys, like, look at this shit. And you seeing like white people jump out the motherfucking Uber and take pictures by the O or by the, or by, or by the King Von mural and jump in the car. And so they're like, is, like I said, we're like tigers in the fucking But it's cage. no different than and if you think different. about in Los Angeles County, you got all kind of parents keeping their kids away from South Central LA and Crenshaw and all that stuff. But when Nipsey but, but dies, the ones from Cal- right. but no, when Nipsey right. dies, yep, we're going. They're, they're going and taking that picture of the mural. So to me, it's a double-edged sword. Um, Hip-hop no, can't it, grow to where it is without the multicultural I, like support. I, said, I think it's the white folks always... And it don't get it twisted. I don't mean like I'm saying that y'all don't don't come and 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 feel sad and mourn and and try to, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you can't be that. affected by something that you don't experience. Right. That's that's right. what it comes down to. You can't be affected by something that you truly don't experience. That's why poor kids never understand the rich kid that has everything, but his parents ain't around, so he hates his life. Because a poor kid can't wait to get his motherfucking parents away from them. Because <laughs> poor, par- cause poor parents are strict out of fear of your kid costing them money, do, get putting them in a situation that you don't have the power to get them out of. There's a lot of anxiety in raising children poor or middle class. But when you're wealthy, you you, you know you running after that bag. Are you jet, jet setting? You're doing what you do. And your kid got all the space and freedom in the world. And, and, and if you're an inner city poor kid or a middle class poor, you know, like type kid, you don't understand that. You like, man, what the fuck is wrong with Jesse? Like, this nigga, you know, he got this whole fat ass house to himself. He got them two cars in the driveway, money. Driving woo, woo, woo. His dad's Bugatti Why is he tripping? Why are he acting up? So let's um. You don't understand what you don't experience sometimes, bro. So let's go back to what we was talking about. So hold on, nigga. Like, <laughs> here, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, it, it it's all on the same thing in terms of just it's making a point to experiences. When you talk about people, mm-hmm. see this is another this is the double edged swords about it. You can't rap. It's like the N word, fam. It gets to a certain point where every black American person mm-hmm. that got a parent told their parents around. I'm I'm don't quote me on the number, but I'm gonna say around. Eh, you stop getting away with fighting kids in school because they called you a nigger. About 98, 96, 98-ish. You might get to squeeze that if your parent was a little more militant. You know what I'm saying? But fam, black parents wasn't taking that shit. Like, they called you a what? Like, boy, you you got kicked out of school today because a white kid called you what? Get your motherfucking ass in the room, right? Or you're not doing that today, or you're not doing this. It wasn't one of those things. Like, I'm not speaking for everybody, but I'm just talking about that's what it seemed like the tone was. like, And even society picked up on that. Right. Like, kind of like, eh, he called, did he really call you that? Or, you know, people, it's, it's and one why of Why do we have to, like, go so far to explain ourselves? Why is it always like, well, did that really happen? Did this? Yeah, motherfucker. Like, no, because the water, I'm going to tell you like, why, because that's what I'm trying to get to is the watering down of these things. <laughs> what I'm speaking to is it was a time where this society, would not show a man and a woman laying in the same bed. Go look at certain TV shows. When they showed bedroom scenes, it was two fucking twins, right? It was a time in the 90s when we were growing up that they wouldn't show a gay couple or a gay character. They would hint to it. Right. Right? right. Yeah. You would kind of be like, hey, I wonder if so-and-so's character is gay. Right. Like, it would always be a t- it's taboo to talk about. It was, it was taboo. We are gonna get to a place where they are gonna show male frontal like they do in Europe. Well, shit, look at look at Tevin Campbell's whole career, for instance, about like Tevin Campbell would be a mega star today. Yeah, but he came out at the wrong time. Look at that. Where where? Okay. Well, you know what? It, let, let's let's talk about that. Did he come out at the wrong time, 
or did he expose himself as a fraud? See, this is the thing about heteros, in my opinion, about heterosexual, homo, homosexual relationships in terms of like coexisting. I think the heterosexual realm of society mm. is just like, yo, be upfront and be honest. That's he kind of was, though, because if you go look at Can We no, Talk, do you know no, what I mean? Like, no. if you watch, I mean, he not, Bro, he, he wasn't. had beautiful young women all through his video. Every time no, he was, watch Can we every talk time, no, listen to me, every it, time, them, them they, you don't remember the Fresh Prince like episode dudes. when he was dating Ashley? Come no, on, no, fam. But what I'm saying is like, they market in that, him as in a that team. Can We Talk video, if you go watch, like a lot of them girls are dressed like boys. There's Bro, a lot of see, you boys. Being like, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like, okay, that's I feel what you're saying. We can go there, but what but I'm saying is, the, I'm, going, I'm talking yeah. about the surface level shit. Mm-hmm. Surface level is they they marketed him oh, as yeah, a good, yeah. as a as a handsome, good looking young man that was a heartthrob that was yeah. basically the next young Luther, which turns out allegedly, allegedly nigga, he could have been the next young Luther. That being said, right? Because but I, but niggas on the fence about Luther. But what Sam Cooke <laughs> is today. Right. Tevin Campbell could have been that and much, much more because he would have had a longer reign. Like his vocal ability was far superior than like a young Usher or oh, yeah. you know any of these Chris Browns or anything like that as young kids. He was this nigga was sounding like Luther and grown ass men. Like you know what I'm saying? Singer, bro. And even now he still got vocals, but you're right. Him come, him being exposed to be a homosexual male mm-hmm. at that point in time ruined his career. Another one, Dookie Hauser. Oh. Now on the back end, I think by the grace of God, because he's aged well, he took care of himself, he's getting a lot of roles and stuff now. But why but, are they making him okay, but why are they making him play a womanizer so much? I think in that I think that is just is that, is, is I that think his it's choice? just funny. I think it's just funny. I think it might be his choice. Because too. I've seen him on a, a reality show once mm-hmm. with his uh significant other. Mm-hmm. His partner, I think that's the correct term. I think and, I, and I one thing I picked up on it is like He's a jokester, mm-hmm. fam. Like he actually like a great personality. I it think seems. He, I think he does it on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think it's just think funny, it's like, him, like because it cost him it, millions like, of dollars at one point in time. Mm-hmm. It co- he was the hottest thing smoking in Young Hollywood, and then all of a sudden, poof, nigga, he can't get a role. And, never saw and it's not Doogie like he again. fell off. Because I'm gonna keep it real, I I you know knew him as different? Doogie Hauser till we saw him as an adult. And actor. you know, you know what's and different? We knew his name Neil Patrick. Harris. Yeah, you know what's different about Neil Patrick? Let me be respectful, Harris. Versus Jaleel White, Jaleel White's character was sophomoric in nature. Yep, they were both massive stars and great at what they did and showed great acting prowess. Yeah, and potential. Right, had great range, but one's character remained you to be on lunch pails and you know high school teeny bopper, not even high school, like elementary, junior high is type crowd. Where the other's character, he was a fucking doctor. Mm-hmm. So you can put him in a in a any kind of role and it's believable because like nigga you we you sold us you to played a, a child doctor, doctor nigga like, like nigga. and we believed you right you know what I'm saying some teenage savant doctor like nigga was like I get hurt <laughs> nigga take me to Dookie man. right and Dookie Hauser was clean so just the vocabulary the vernacular all that the like the, you know the real life it's just gonna be different it, it's just something that I think that people moving forward to probably pay attention to now I'll, we did we we're way off. Uh, <laughs> From what we're talking about I'm going to be honest. I, back to our original point, I say about 2003, 2004. What? Is when the mainstream fucking music conglomerate companies figured out that murder was going to outsell So this is my else. thing. I get, that's probably, okay, I'm not going to dispute that. Yeah. Like, that's undisputable. It's your, it's your, it's your opinion what i'm adding to it i'm just trying to add to it i'm not trying to debate you this is a thought i had when i seen that when i watched that thing smoked the L and i was thinking like damn so when you think about back with with black planet rock right right that was gang culture mm-hmm. we don't we glorify the hip-hop creation part of it right. and the parties but it was a time where nigga if you come to this party this gang Dame, Dame Dash mm-hmm. and Puffy was like that last generation of popping ass from my what I've seen right. of uh, like the historic realm of we throw parties. This is my gang that run this shit. We right. getting money off these parties. Right. Come over here on invite only. Yeah. It's going to be popping. If you come over here from the other side of one of them other gangs, we fucking you up. So it was another fragment of gang culture that was already embedded into hip hop. 
battle rapping, DJ battles, uh, dance battles. battles. Yeah. These all stemmed from gangs battling each other right. first, and we always forget this. Right. So when they be like, hip hop's kind of you know got is is you know Wu-Tang's coming whole, out of the street. Whole like thing is built on Shaolin monks and sword fighting and it. I get you know it. What I'm saying so. When I but look at the but look at the lyrical content. The lyrical content is dope. Niggas talking about popping your top. I, nigga, I, I wanna I wanna retract my two thousand two two thousand four. I feel like it's later than that. I feel no, like bro. I feel like it really. I feel like these people really started like. Well, let me ask you this: making us or not making us, but I feel like they started putting the the gang culture, the drug culture, the pimp culture, the murder culture, all that as the as the poster child for hip hop music in like I say like 2010, 2011 so I, I, that's where I started I'm sitting there I just unloaded the, the, the joint and put it in, put the last shit in the storage Right. and I'm sitting there and I'm like I'm thinking of this shit and I kept finding myself how you keep going one direction I started that way and then ended up going back another direction and no, you're because you're right. It's, no, it has roots deeply. Because think about it. Better. I'm gonna tell you right now. You're absolutely. Me, right. I'm gonna tell you when they got whiff of it. You're absolutely right. When hip hop was still niche and people were saying that it was gonna die away, like techno. Techno was beating hip hop out on radio stations right. and things like that. Um, it was pretty much a predominantly African American culture, mm-hmm. right? Young African American culture. Older cats didn't fuck with hip hop. They didn't get it. Not at all. My dad and we was rapping over their records. So it really pissed them off because right. of our uncles and pops and shit. Like, nigga, y'all rapping over the uh, Mar- Marvin Gaye sample? What the fuck is that? My like, dad didn't like Little shit like that. Either, they ain't like that, right? So, okay, all. whatever. Y'all, we got to hold this. We, we going to hold this. You going to keep holding this. Nigga, that's like when we accidentally ate your big piece of chicken. Hold it. We ain't know. We ain't see that. You feel me? So, look, hold that pops. Hold that uncle. We unk, we 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 taking that and we doing our own thing with it. Um, them hard bottoms is dead, right? Right, but but at that same time, the records that broke, if you think about it, for the time, were hardcore records. Young kids today don't look at Run DMC as street niggas. No. Nope. And and Jam Master J had a thing on him all the time. Street dudes, nigga. Like <laughs> I was watching the joint Jam where they took these niggas took Bimmy. Him. These niggas took Bimmy in the prime of his dope dealing career, nigga, on national international tour. Yeah, had that nigga on like a Good Morning America type show, nigga. Like just nigga, I'm out here, nigga. What, nigga? Fast probably looking for me. Nah, there was nothing soft. I through all. Through, through the whole Broken life, glass everywhere Through the whole life of hip hop music When they start talking about that type shit Through the whole life of hip hop music hip, There's never been No matter how you look at hip hop music There's not a soft spot In hip hop music Well that's what I, now that's what brings me to today's time It's always been groomed To be where it's at today But you know what they cause yeah, cause I'll, I'll second that Cause you know what I feel like I figured out that they did one of the things that was dangerous about black R&B music mm-hmm. is it allowed black people to seep into white people's homes. Right. It allowed them to because show the, they loved the music side and all that shit. No, you know they saying? loved the music. The music right. was talented because there was some badass R&B dudes like nigga that Lil Walter nigga will pop your ass <laughs> and has pop people. I'm not saying that nigga. The street niggas Shot that nigga on street stage, niggas that's nigga, rapping like, today, man. they were street niggas that was R&B dudes. They oh, just wore silk nigga. shirts. And crooned, but when they got off that stage, they moved like gangsters. Because let's talk about let not me, even RB. Let I'll me land you. real quick. All I'm saying is this: what what I was trying to say is that those cats of that time, the street element was there, right? Mm-hmm. We know that. But as far as the evolution, Marvin Gaye or Little Walter or Little Richard or any of these dudes in a prime. No matter what they were singing and talking about, for the most part, even the Sam Cooks, the most revolutionary of them at the time, they were so dangerous because they were so cross the board in terms of who their reach was right. because their music ability and their type of music. More so also their presence. These were clean-cut, good-looking black people. 
whether it was the uh, Supremes or anybody, right? They were clean cut, they were well to do, they were well spoken, they were class personified, and they were talented. Who don't? Who ain't gonna like them? Right. You feel me? What good person ain't gonna be like? I like Diana White. You know what I'm saying? I like Aretha Franklin, right? I like these Shaka Khan's and people like this. But what happens is, bro, is that like they've taken that element, right? That I don't want to say do what for lack of better terminology, but you know what I'm trying to say when I say that, right? That like softer tone of blackness that Motown capitalized on when that it used to be chess records and it was so rough and soulful and gutter and this is what we going through, this is how I feel. So they cleaned it up to where it could be Christmas carol like, but still kind of have some soul to it. They're doing that with rap music, and they did that with hip-hop while making it murder. So now the hardcore shit, mm -hmm. sometimes kids overlook the hardcore lyrics because it got like a fucking immature-esque bop to it. Right. This shit got like a soft usher, you make me want to bop to it. Mm -hmm. And these niggas is talking about drilling a nigga that's, that, that, that dissed them on, on the fucking YouTube the other day. <laughs> right. These niggas, and that's the difference too. Now, the only difference is now, we've gotten so comfortable with this camera and this phone, and I guess this word called clout, that, that just, that's a, a real thing I'm starting to realize, that niggas will say, yo, Dre, nigga, you diss me, nigga. When I see you, I'm going to pop you, nigga. Oh, yo, this nigga Drake got me fucked up, yo. I'm going to pop him. And then, nigga, go out there and pop you and then get back on the live. Like, what? I told you, niggas. I ain't the one nigga don't play. Right. See, nigga, when we was young, the nigga that came outside and bust his gun Didn't and said say, about 15 mm -hmm. words after that, he was crazy. Right, yeah. Niggas like, don't, bro, that nigga shot talk. that nigga yeah. and stayed around. That nigga crazy. For five shit. seconds or 15 seconds. It got like five words off. Yeah. He, said, he was like, nigga, you niggas, nigga, this is how I do it. Nigga, woo, woo. And he dipped off though. And we never seen that nigga again unless the feds caught him or the boys caught him. Right. You just never seen him again. And then he came back, you know, later and it was just a whisper, like, bro, you know, so and so. He back the on the block. You know, yeah. he the one that did that so and so. But now we never those dudes, never in a million years. You couldn't even get those dudes on camera. Bro, you know how many young black journalists, videographers, have been stifled because and I got a friend that has his own film company. Shout out to Jeff Porter and Porter Films. Because, bro, when this nigga used to pop up, he always had a camera. Oh, we give this nigga all type of shit. Oh, yeah. And they like, hey, nah, bro, nigga, you doing, can't use nigga? none of that, nigga. Delete that shit, Jeff. Like, you all that, that shit. We was on this nigga's head. Now I wish I can get all that footage from this nigga. This nigga got a whole journey of <laughs> niggas' lives, nigga, on video back in the day. Nigga, nigga, we chopped that up to all kind of content. <laughs> but I thought about that, like, damn, how many dudes bring out a camera back in the day and got ran off the, out their circle? Like, bro, stop playing, man. Put that shit away. You can have a a, a big camera, like whatever camera, like niggas some don't light shit. See none of that shit. Niggas went with that because what niggas, you yeah, you, you ain't us. broadcasting what the fuck we got going on out here. This nigga selling dope. This nigga selling dope. Nigga, I selling dope over here. Nigga ain't about to expose the whole block. Like, think about podcasting back then. Yeah. Hey, bro, you want to record our conversation? Weed, weed, nigga. Fam, you want to record our conversation? Think about <laughs> mid-90s sitting down with any rapper in the mid-90s and be like, yo, I want you to sit you down, and, and I'm going to have you sit down with all these other rappers, and I want you to just tell in-depth stories about their life, nigga, with their gun charges, nigga, how they caught. They will look at you like, bro, what the fuck? You the feds, nigga? You gotta yeah, bro. Hey, yo, don't talk to that nigga no more. Let me tell you what you get. Asked me you'd to do. get one of these, like nigga. Yeah, put your shirt up, nigga. Like, the niggas really be you? whispering, like, bro, like, don't, that nigga came, bro. Fuck with that nigga. You know what the nigga asked me nigga. yesterday? This thing asked me what you was doing. They asked me about that thing. Yeah. So it's the evolution of all these things, and I'm like, man, I don't want to just blame it on these young niggas and say they wild because it's not. Look just at the, the shit young that niggas. that we was listening to. Because even if they were little kids listening to that, right. What they gonna do? Like, and the only thing is that now, bro, Snoop and them, we I seen God bless them. I seen what Snoop beat his murder. We watched that. Yeah, Snoop to this day denies that that he killed that man. Right, right. We know that his bodyguard is the one that shot the guy. Yeah, Snoop's hands are clean in terms of actually murdering somebody. Mm -hmm. We looked at Snoop nigga like King Von. Yeah, nigga when King after that shit. 
Snoop was like a fly ass, smooth talking King Von. He nigga. got away with murder, nigga. That could dunk a basketball. Yeah. This nigga could do all things. That's why he's the most popular rapper to this day. Right. That carried him into even white kids and shit was like, ooh, Snoop Doggy Dog. Like, nigga, he'll kill you. Like, he'll do this. They're like, you know what I mean? Right. It was kind of dangerous. And then he got linked in with Pac. When Pac mm -hmm. got to the road and then Pac got killed the way he did, Snoop was like, oh, he survived that. Nigga, that's Snoop. Nigga, you know, he, right. he does the killing. Right. We don't talk about that now. Right. And yeah, Snoop was talented. His music and shit, like his contributions, was worthy of his praise. But that was a part of it. Mm -hmm. I moved to the suburbs around that time. I know that was a lore kind. That was kind of like you know, Snoop Doggy Dog, nigga. I know a bunch of motherfuckers. He don't with the fuck doggy a, style album. Yeah, dog. Shit, he man. don't Let's fuck around, real, right? Nigga. So, nigga, Hispanic kids. Oh yeah. White kids. Yeah. You've seen it, and then like in that moment, that's what the the, the burden became. Now, when you have outsiders having dictation of the culture and, and where the culture's going, there it's only for entertainment. It's like fighters that don't like bo boxers like Floyd because they just want to see both fighters bloody. Beat the shit out of each other. Boxing fans is like, I mean, if it happens skillfully. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes when it's two skilled motherfuckers, you got to just throw punches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. But I don't want to see niggas that don't move they pause don't move their hips don't move their feet at all nigga just stand in front of just that's a boring fight chain, nigga. yeah right i don't want to see that shit but there's a we're in a minority majority of fight fans want to see somebody get fucked up it's from that gladiator type culture that the dominant culture comes from that's what they want to see you oh you niggas ain't talking about because think about it when rap was uber positive it was public enemy number one. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until motherfuckers start, and they was using the fact that black rappers was using the word bitch and shit like that as a way of like degrading it. But when when niggas start talking about killing each other, right, and start talking about selling dope, right, and doing drugs, and Changed making that, whole game. see, because you got to remember, I'm old enough to remember when me and my friends looked at Eminem's first album cover and was like, "Yo, this white boy is crazy." crazy. Pills, Percocets, Vicodin, He's talking all about types of shit. Nigga, what? Right. And I remember thinking like, Killing hey man, when I got Kim hurt, Kim and all types when I got shit. hurt, they gave me some of that thing they call Vicodin. Yeah. Like, damn, that's crazy. He just be eating those. And right. It's on his album cover. Right. Well, fam, I can't, I could surmise a young Lil Wayne in the industry growing up, got all the weed, all the lean access, all the other things, and then you see Eminem who can rap his ass off and incorporates doing all that, that shit. and gets a pass for it. Right. I can see a young future, a young kid being like, "Oh, nigga, this, that motherfuckers don't get don't get to get a pass because you because you you know the rap guy." They say right, like you have an influence too. Because if we all think about if it, Snoop like influenced the game influence, with weed, that nigga was a whole addict. If Snoop and Wiz get will always be tied to weed. Eminem was gonna what be tied would, to what would Eminem be tied to in that regard? Drugs and fucking P prescription drugs and and domestic violence, and homophobic slurs, and homophobia. Yeah. This is not bashing on Eminem Day. No, I'm not, I'm not no, shitting not on Shady. I'm just keeping we're it just, a buck. Yeah, we're just going like, through. Like, you remember when they was trying to like them young kids was talking about like, oh, we're gonna cancel Eminem for what right. he said back in the day. We laughed at that shit. Get <laughs> like, the fuck out of here, nigga. That shit was hard. Right, you had yeah, to be, yeah. you had to be you there, had to my be nigga. There. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. was hard when it yeah. dropped, my nigga. I know gay kids, nigga, that loved him, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. And because Eminem's not a homophobe. Hey man, I don't speak for he no man. He just spits. But like, at the same time, rap, nigga, like, like I'm from an era where like you could say the f word. Yeah, you could say the r word in terms yeah. of like kids that were slow and and, like, and grown intelligent people use those words. So it's not, you know, it's it's it. Fam, nobody wants to say it, but it's like a. 70 plus year old white man that used to be able to freely use the word nigger to describe black people it is. in his community growing up and had to evolve out of that because if you truly don't mean malice and you know it's hurtful disrespectful and, and all those things you'll stop saying it. it even if it's an evolution mm -hmm. you'll stop saying it Barack Obama famously wrote in his book about how he would cringe when a black athlete would miss a shot that his dad, grandpa was betting on or like watching something or rooting for because the N-word would come out or that dumb, lazy nigga. And he said one day, without him ever mustering the courage to ever speak to his grandfather about it, but it bothered him. He said one day, watching a baseball game, shit happened, 
his grandfather kind of in his, you know, flashing, looked over and seen him. Now that's his baby boy. He he helped raise this kid. Right. He loved his kid. Hey, every parent has a problem with who you pick to mate with, and when you decided to have a baby, until the fucking baby comes. Right. Mm-hmm. That usually washes away the fact that right. it's half Italian right. Right. or Jewish or black or right. white. All that bullshit gets washed right out the window. Like, oh, it's my grandbaby, and ain't nobody gonna bother it. Right. So it was kind of one of those things. His grandfather naturally seen that reaction in him. He seen the hurt in him, and he said he never heard him say that word again. And he said that he he noticed nobody that used that word freely was ever around again. Right. That's evolution. I think every human deserves that. Right. Right. That's hard to sometimes say as an African as a fundamental, a foundational Black American person. Right. Sometimes that's hard to say because it's like, damn, it's turning the other cheek. Yeah. But it's real, though. No, nah, it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's real. This shit is over hundreds of years of... And so what Guy was saying that you, that you referenced about how it's okay to only speak about killing foundational black Americans. If, you, if a rapper start killing... If, if Rick Ross... He said it, right? Rick Ross had a verse where he's talking about yeah, killing rape. black people. No, date rape. Starting out with oh, killing kill black, black people. people. In yeah. that verse, he's talking about killing oh, yeah. a nigga this, do it, get yeah. a nigga, all this. All this talk about murdering and killing black people. The second he and, says something and, about date and, rape. And this is one thing that popular culture equates to black women is when a rapper says bitch, he's automatically talking about black women, mm-hmm. right? Um, so he says he points out that he's able to disrespect black women. He's able to talk about murdering young murdering black men. It's a number one hit record until he gets to a small port where he references an innuendo stating that popped a Molly in her drink. She don't even know, right? We all know about it. He lost sponsorships. He lost he all lost type all of things. Of People chastised him. How him. dare him? <laughs> You know, and on that very song, he talks about killing black people. Right. Um, It's a tricky subject because it's evolved. Because I tell this story, I don't know if I told it before. I'm at my group home when I was running a group home. Let's be real quick. I'm at the group home, kid, and I'm like hearing the. Now, it's probably about 16, 17 boys at the time. About eight black boys. I'm hearing the music on, rap music, obviously. That don't mean shit. But I'm hearing cursing. That don't mean shit. But I'm hearing, nah, nigga. Oh, my mama. I swear to God, nigga, nah. So I'm like, damn. I talked to the boys about this. I got the uh, therapist coming over. Got a couple other people coming over. We know we cleaning up. We getting right for a group therapy. Let me run up there and check them real quick, man. Remind them. Dog, I go upstairs. None of the black kids are in the room. It's all the white boys. It's the white boys, the talking kids, some of the Asian kids and Hispanic kids. And... When I walk in, you know, they clean. They're doing everything I'm telling them to do. So when I walk in, kind of like, they they look. they like, what's up, King? All of them, fam. When I say I didn't have no words, I just was like, oh, nothing, man. Uh, pizza be here in a minute, fam. Like, oh, okay. Let me and talk about- I had to turn around and walk out because, dog, I have friends that's not black that use the N-word. I know the hip hop shit, the culture where it's made it a sexy word, and and if you're of the culture, you can use it. If you're not of the culture, if you grew up around black people, I know all that bullshit. I went through all that. We're from the, mm-hmm. we're from a, that era, but I guess at that time it was just to not. I think it would have made more sense if just like at least one black kid was in the room, right? Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that just it don't. <laughs> and so like, you know what I'm saying? It just when I seen dog, I remember I tell this story all the time because. You know me, I talk all the time, bro. That's why we have a podcast. It's one of the few times in my life that I can recall. Hey, Keem, tell me a time that you were rendered speechless. <laughs> Nigga, at that moment, I just kind of like walked away. And to this day, I don't I don't know if I was addressing that situation right now with a group of young men. How I know I would a- address them like, yo, y'all, you know. Because there's no way in hell that a non-black American person gets to use the N-word. And not have to check it the way black Americans do. Because no black American could walk in their grandma's house and be like, yeah, nigga, hand me the breakfast. Hand me, hand me the, uh, the, uh, the, the bread over there, my nigga. You can't do that. 
So you are not gonna be just freely using it no matter who's around. So at the end of the day, when older people are around, when woo woo, I mean, do is it at the point where we just give them the rules to that? Like nigga, here go the rules, nigga. Mm -hmm. Because it sounds divisive, divisive, but I think hip hop will be in a better condition. Even non black fans that complain about the state of hip hop, the shit would be better if black people were the overseers. It would be. Because black people would have signed Eminem. Do you know do you know Hold on, get my point? Russ is getting signed. Mac Miller's getting signed. You can't think of one talented white rapper that would not benefit from a black CEO. Mm -hmm. But we've seen a billion black rappers and musicians not benefit from non-black CEOs because they don't understand the culture, they don't respect the culture, they don't care about it, they just want to profit. If it's long lasting, hey man, if you want to become a Japanese samurai, you got to go through the Japanese folk. You want to go be a monk, you got to go to Monastery. How many MMA fighters, black, white, Asian, American descent play people, Mar American natives, have to go to Thailand and shit, dirt and places to get their stamps to really get signed all off of on like, oh yeah, I'm a world all class, I'm the legit. They gotta go. They gotta go over there. They have all. They go to all types of. World Ain't nothing wrong with that. Tournaments. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's culture. Right. That's the beauty of diversity. You know, but it's about one group of people moving into the realm of humanity when they were cast away as less than. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful thing, because they didn't do, we didn't do that, our ancestors didn't do that with jazz, and look what happened. Right. They didn't do that with rock and roll. They didn't do that with thing, with country music that used to be called jigaboo music and all this other type of shit. Like, so now with this hip hop shit, because even now, on some non-racial shit, Name a, a group of non African Americans that have made up a new genre within hip hop culture. So there's something to be said about that. Now, I'm just not beating my chest. That's not saying that nobody else is added to the culture. Because when you start talking a little Spanish shit on some rap shit, that shit hard. And no African American person has knocked it, they've only supported it if they liked it. Right? It's about the diversity of it. So if you got one group of people that have seemingly become masters of yielding diversity, maybe they should be the, the execs. Maybe they should be the overseers. Right. Hey, man, we didn't create football or the NBA. So if they want to make all the coaching, all the decision makers, non-black American, I get that. Right. Black people got to understand sometimes you got to just be thankful for your opportunities. You're in the NBA. You're in the NFL. That's dope. That's not our league. Right, but if hip hop isn't uniquely black Americans, what the fuck is it? I'm talking from, it's gotten to the point where non-Caribbean, non-African body types have went and gotten surgeries to get that. That all comes from hip hop. Right. Shit, nigga, Shaka Khan was built like Beyonce in her prime. White girls wasn't going to get motherfucking hip implants and shit like that. They was denying Shaka Khan certain ads, nigga saying she was too thick. Right. Tyra Banks didn't get certain jobs, bro. She was too, too thick. Too thick, right. Think about that. This <laughs> this ain't racism talking. This is just an observation. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying that. See, because it's it's weird because a black kid could see, like a Kanye, could work at a gap which historically was considered a suburban, middle-class type white brand. But he could take his ass back to within the inner city world, nigga, wearing that shit, get it popping, like, oh, where'd you get that from? We don't have, we're not discriminative. If Brook Brothers, nigga, if a rapper starts wearing Brook Brothers and talking about Brook Brothers, they stock about to go up. That's unique hip hop. Because I'm gonna tell you right, why, why? Eminem is the most, they say he's the most one of the most influential rappers and people in the world. Mm -hmm. He's definitely one of the most famous rappers in the world. Let's, let's what go. fashion trend let's, trend is he able to set? We gonna, within we, the culture? we gonna back into something that you said. We just said this too, and as I'm scrolling through my fucking phone, New York drill rapper Nas Blickley. No, I was gonna get to that. That was on the, my legend. Yeah. Shot in the head. Who shot? Yeah. And then somebody going right on fucking the shit. And they banged on him, nigga. That was his op. EBK. Was his I op. hope you die. Like. 
ABK we Blicky. just talked about it. This is best is best is yeah. Should we just this shit just getting out of hand? So now it's, that's what I'm saying. You like get to the bread, that's like, what got me the only shit too. And I should have I should have said that. I'm sorry, but like, fam, you gotta when I when when some of our cats from our era like be like, man, yo, these young niggas, or yo, these young drill niggas. I'm like, bro, what do you think gangster rap evolved to? Gangster rap used to be an unnice way of saying politically correct things. Mm. Or non political politically correct things. Right? We ain't gonna sugarcoat it, nigga. This is what's going on. Right? This is what the fuck I see. Yo, back where I'm from, niggas be calling girls bitches and hoes when they act like this. <laughs> Yo, back where I'm from, the girls ain't really all that nice, nigga. They be getting niggas murdered. Right. Right? Some of them sell their body, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's only with you for some bread. Like, this is the world that Whereas it was a time where, you know, you used to have to make a metaphor for that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she a little Jezebel, you know what I'm saying? She a little, you know what I'm saying? You had to make a shit ski son. Like, you had to make names up for that. Right. She a hood rat. She a hoochie mama, nigga. Like, no, nah, no, nah, she's, a, she's a bitch, nigga. She's a whore. That's how they talk now. Mm -hmm. It's becoming, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a terms. Dog, nowadays, think about this. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't freak this on another level. The censorship. Right. You know how you used to could be, can control your little, my, my little nephew Jalen from hearing certain words and songs, even if he liked the song. Yeah. You could just, you know, make sure he don't, you know, don't got that square on it, right? Mm -hmm. Fam, no, you can't go to Vivo. When you watch these videos, bro, I'm like, nigga, these is little shorts. Yeah, they're not. Ed the, this shit's not. Edited. Niggas is killing niggas out of this yeah, shit. Nigga, all, die the, all, the, all the cussing, all the everything. I'm there's like, no, dog, how does a parent no censorship in it? Like, protect from that. You can't. You can't. So it forces you to have these conversations that. You know what's crazy? It's like at the same time that you're trying to, de you're like desensitizing with the YouTube and the, all that shit. You're still sensitizing. Like, how the fuck are you doing? No, it's like you're, you're. you're let me land. Let me land with you, if I if I may, because you you had you said something beautiful. While you're desensitizing, you're desensitizing. our children and, and people to the horrendous <laughs> parts of the of society, right? You're what's the word I'm looking for? You're um babying them, coddling them. You're coddling mm -hmm. a whole generation a whole at the same generation. time. So now we got a now, bunch of now, now we got a bunch of Karen's, sensitive ass kids. We got kids. Hold on, kids. But we, hold on, but we got a bunch Maybe. of. We got a bunch of sensitive ass kids, bunch being forced with adult like. I I keep hearing about this show Euphoria, and they're saying that it's the modern day version of kids. The movie? Yeah. Oh, I gotta watch. That's it. what I'm saying. No, you had the same. <laughs> I so when I heard that, and it got Zendaya in it. <laughs> if no, no, no. This is what this is how they flipped it. They had Zendaya. They did the reverse. Oh. Rosario Dawson became Zendaya type thing. Like right, she became a star after that mm. and played in all these. No, they was like, no, nah, we're going to get the, the one that y'all like from Disney. Yeah, we're going to get her, nigga, yeah, and put her in this yeah. shit. Nigga, they say the kids, it was a debate I heard where people was like, I don't know if it's realistic, man, these kids. And it was a clubhouse joint, so you're getting all these different perspectives. And it was, man, about 15 parents came in and was like, yo, I'm 40. I got 21-year-old. I got a 17. I got 16-year-old. I got 13-year-old. No, nigga, there's kids at their school doing coca oh yeah these kids at their all school they're all popping pills nigga they're drinking lean and gatorade bottles Perkies, nigga, they, doing, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. they had four kids od this year they and they're talking about that like whereas it was a time where it was like okay this gang culture shit the kids are fighting might get these shot, kids from might this side of town and this school are gaining up and going to that side of town and they're fighting each other now or, or you know this group of kids in this school is fighting this group of kids in this school because they're from different neighborhoods and they. Because I'm gonna keep it real, I, through my whole school career, <coughs> I don't know one person that OD'd off of drugs. Nah, I don't know motherfuckers that now, was doing Percocet. I know like motherfuckers that. that was doing drugs, I, I, but but not like on the extent it of was what like it is shrooms, now, nigga. Trees, right? It wasn't. It wasn't Percocets. A it wasn't, little bit of ecstasy was coming yeah, in the game. It wasn't. I was high it school. wasn't worrying about doing. We weren't doing coke and all that shit. Worrying about fentanyl, and all that shit. But here's the thing about the sensitivity shit. It's like okay, look at bullying. Bullying in our day, eventually you would just fight the bully. They made movies about this, bro. Right. Eventually, you would just... Little Giants. Let's get it. I'm the fuck is Little Giants about? 
You won't, we all have somebody. What is that Little was, Giants about? Yeah, right? the same thing. Like David against Goliath shit. But it's like we all have somebody that fuck with us, and eventually you just woke up one morning like, let this nigga say something to me. Today. Oh, you hit a growth spurt. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of different things happen, yeah. bro. You just is just that one day you just like, I, let this nigga say something today. And I'm so a, what I'm happens? A, it's a generation of people. You know what this whole bullying shit come becomes. It becomes a deflection of a gener of, of a gener. So you have a generation of them '80s babies, early '90s babies, and shit like that. '70s babies that had learned to become outspoken. Mm -hmm. Bullying and that kind of banter back and forth became sophomore. It became kind of right. uh, fraternal. It right. became um, all these different things. You have so many people that are successful. At, to the highest degrees, push me, push that mankind were bullied further, like a and they'll say it school. started because I was forced to be an outcast. Because guess what, my mind was born and developed to create the fucking internet. Mm -hmm. My mind was born and developed to create to, Microsoft, to create my, to do this, Apple, or to, or to create Nike, right. or to do this, or to do whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? To, and, or, to sing, or, nigga, Mark Zuckerberg. Look how awkward and weird he is because his mind was created. You to know make how, Facebook. You know how and be a billionaire. You know how weird you got to be to be a young prince. <laughs> Listen to me. I have a cousin who's a childhood best friend that I'm. I call him my cousin. We're not really cousins, but he's more like a brother to me. Mm -hmm. And Menzel is a musical genius. But dog, I'm telling you right now, as a kid, he's my best friend. Like we was. I can't think of it. I can think of it in hindsight. Mm -hmm. It didn't bother me then. It bothered other people. Mm -hmm. But when I think back, it's like, oh, that's funny. He used to make sounds. Nigga, he couldn't sit around and not do nothing with some shit. Right. He's going to produce. If he heard a sound that was funny, he wasn't going to stop trying to make it with his mouth until he could make it pause. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the same, I'm I know the same as that way. On, I'll be here like. But that's the thing about our character. Is that, that's why I could shit. vibe with you and your yeah. brother and people, certain people like that. This dude right here is the reason why I could sit in the studio with a bunch of rappers for 12, 13 hours. You nigga, don't rap at all. And I don't rap at all. Right. Like, I could sit in the studio with one of my producer friends, nigga, and be like, nigga, let's find the one that you, you want. You could listen to me make a beat and hear the same loop for four hours. Just as long as you can. Right. Which is why I probably should do more engineering and shit like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because that, but, that, to kind of veer off real quick. We chopping, we living. Motherfuckers don't understand, like, how hard it is to be an engineer. The skill set. To you know sit the only rapper, and keep doing this. You know what the only rap, the first rapper, I should say, to ever highlight that? <laughs> Honestly? Who? I'm gonna tell you when engineers start getting love. I'm shooting shit at the wall right now. <laughs> Tupac. Yeah. You're gonna be like, what you talking about? And I'm gonna remind you of the clip. Remember Tupac in this joint? He's smoking and he like, yo, where all y'all niggas go? Like, nigga, you don't have to be here. Nigga, woo, 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 woo. we ain't got time for that shit, fam. We don't got time. Right. He was like, nigga, I, you right there, you was just in the, hey, look, he told the engineer, he's like, yo. When you got these niggas in the studio, you are charged, my nigga. Right. Like, hey, y'all listen to him. Right. When, you, when you see them niggas in the studio and they just bullshitting and the music and they Check like the out. beat and they rapping, yeah. he said, fuck that. We don't got time to wait for them. Right. He was like, record that shit. That's they verse. And he said, and you, the last nigga to go in there on that, on that joint, he was like, whatever the last thing he said or the dopest nigga thing that he said in his verse, that's the name of the song. What he was describing is, is modern day Kanye. Yep. It's the fact that Kanye West can sit down in front of you like what we're doing now. Some people have the perplexity. They, they, they got a lot of things going on. And to the masses, that's anti-focused. You're distracted, right? Because they can't do it. Mm -hmm. But people will be like, yo, Keen, what are you doing? You're listening to something on your phone. You're watching something on your computer. You got the motherfucking projector on. I'm taking in all that information. And but and then take a nigga like Kanye to understand that. Kanye wouldn't be offended because Kanye's brain works the exact or same way. Or a cat way. like a Joe Rogan. Or me. I'm gonna make a beat. Who? And I'll i have been there's been days where I've made a been making a beat while editing a video, watching shit on my phone. Multifaceted and people just that can doing everything. So and it's the thing. <laughs> what happens is the world is not set up for you. Right. Right? So it makes you go naturally against the grain. But because, that's why I was awkward as fuck in school. School no, didn't stop. I'm, school didn't move my fast God. enough. We potting right now. Like, we potting right the now. Teachers told my that's parents, exactly what the, I was about to get the to. The teachers told my parents is like, your kid's smart as fuck. He hates school. There's not enough focus for him. He's it's don't move fast for him because he they were like, here's his schoolwork scores. 
Here's his test scores. You know He's what? failing because he don't do the schoolwork. You, he aces tests as soon as he takes. You know what Nipsey said? Like, nigga, you know what Nipsey said that gave me chills once? That nigga said, he know he, he know he's a genius, but he just wasn't given the platform right. to main or the tools to maintain it. Genius, yeah. Right? So, you have this. You have these young and I'm talking about the culture, so I'm talking about they these young black. Hold on, I was, I'm saying I'm talking about these young black geniuses that can't be fitted in, fit into a mold or a box. They either ignored in school, or they're considered. They'll they'll try to always put them in a special. Mm-hmm. Hey, the, uh, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, when I heard him speak once, talk about talked about. Um, he said, you know, if you notice, young black kids, when you take them to the grocery store. Or you take them out in public, non-black people can't help but notice how intelligent they are, or how advanced they seemingly are. Yep. He said, but then when you take that same kid and take them to their school, within six to eight months, they're coming back they're to you telling down. them that they got ADHD, yeah. or they have this, or they have yeah. that. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And they don't—they don't ever count the cultural shock that a black kid is going into when he goes into any school in America for the first time. Chances are you're gonna have a white teacher. Like I, I, Chances are I don't you're gonna, think you know I mean? ever, other than when I was back in the D, I don't think I ever had a black teacher. And that's, see, one of the things I had a problem with but and, I, and up, I, up north. I could count the black kids on my hands. No, but peep this though. Like, hey, one of the problems I had up north is that because I grew up having black teachers. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was just like, yo, y'all you don't think, any? I would always bring it up. And you know, Cass would just shut me off like, oh, Kim, you always talking about some race shit. But I was like, yo, y'all don't think it's weird that at our whole school, the only black adults that work here is that one older lady in the office that yep. do attendance yep. and that one black janitor. The janitor. Oh, and the basketball coach. Mm-hmm. Like, and I tell my friends this, that's not black all the time. I say this right here, Dre. I'll be like, yo, what would your mother and father do if you woke up to go to fucking freshman orientation? To the school that you zoned in your neighborhood, drove bought, drove you bypassed it to get to the junior high and elementary school all your life, and they knew, oh, my child's gonna go here, right? They're from Chicago, they moved to Vegas on a bit with business, right? Mm-hmm. They're in the suburbs, boom, boom. You know, their neighborhood looks how like their neighborhood, right? Mm-hmm. So they have no reason to think anything else. They go in for freshman orientation. My baby girl's going to high school. It's a proud moment. They get to the auditorium and they realize every fucking adult at the goddamn school is white. Is black. Oh, you're white. Okay. Is black. Mm-hmm. Except for the basketball coach, one sweet old lady in the attendance office, and maybe an art teacher or maybe a, a, a sub teacher here and there. But that whole thing you're My explaining. question is what would your parents do? Would they drop you off at school? Or would you miss school that day until they figured it out? Like, wait, that's kind of weird. Because I don't think most white people have ever stopped to think about that. The, 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 the excuse is that, oh, well, there's way more white people here, which is not really true, and it's never really been true. Right. But that's the excuse. that Oh, well, you know, we're the majority, and it's not true. Now we have the statistics and shit like that that's showing, like, no, that's not really true. White people aren't really the majority. The in this three country. positions that you just explained, which is so funny, is just that's what black people, if you look at TV shows back in like the 60s and 70s, that's what positions we had in schools on TV was the attendance lady or the secretary, the fucking janitor, or a coach. Be real. Like any, if you were a black character on a TV show with white people that had a school. You were one of those characters. He wasn't a teacher. He wasn't some, you know, pillar. What's up, sis? You was a, you was a, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's exactly what it is. No, you know what's weird, too? And my boy Dave, shout out to him. He always points this out to me. Right. During the time and after. Remember the Titans. And right? after Reconstruction. We'll and after Reconstruction. <laughs> after Reconstruction. Former enslaved indigenous foundational black Americans thrived and they built booming townships and small cities all around the country. They had a, a vast amount of knowledge of the landscape, the skill set, the t- you know, the, 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 the seasons, right? When the crop, what the crop, 
um, blacksmith work, the carpentry that we that we call today was things was slave work. And so these these black men and women were brilliant at it. Um, baking, a lot of bakeries and stuff like that went up and things like that. Um, and now legally they can patent their creations. It was booming time. And then you had a construct, you had a concerted effort by the United States government to halt that. Right, we'll say it. We'll say it that way. To halt that, because I don't want to even take the conversation all the way there. Right, but to halt that, um, we're not with this conversation because it's all. It sounds like we're all over the place, but we're not. With what we're saying, now go back to what we we're originally talking about. Are we naive to think that they wouldn't weaponize our music the way they did our hair? the way they do our clothing. See, nowadays you can't put blame sagging your pants on black people. Nope. On young black men. It was a time that they used to be able to do that. And I used to think like, no, I know a couple, I know a lot of non-black kids that kind of sag, that's just kind of some hip hop shit, that's a style. And then it came out, well, oh, well, you know what that means in prison, right? Which, okay, I'm a grown ass man. I never really was a big fan of sagging. It is what it is. I wore baggy ass pants, so it always appeared that I was sagging, Right. right? But if you pull my shirt up, nigga, I had a big ass bundle of jean and belt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. But now, bro, like that the bro crowd, like you know what I'm talking about? Like that surfer bro crowd, nigga, they be sagging. Think about it. A nigga with a billabong shirt on is not don't got no belt on, nigga. He's sagging his pants. He's always pulling his pants up. Just like a nigga on a trap from the hood, nigga, or something like that, that just refused to wear a belt. Right, and so I, I I'm thinking about it like that, bro. Like the evolution of this shit, like cultural influence versus the negative influence. If vehicles from outside of the culture are driving the influence, what's it? What's his name? Uh, the kid from Jersey that we like, uh, Russ. Russ. Russ broke it down so eloquently, dog, because he said. What I want these young black rappers to understand is they need to study the algorithms. He said, I, I, I've, I've, I've been able to study these algorithms. I've been able to like study these, these, these different uh, demographics. And he said, and also, I'm not naive. I get certain information <laughs> that a J. Cole will never get from a label. Right. He might get it because he had Rock Nation. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting shit that Kendrick ain't ever getting from Interscope. Jimmy Iovine's not. Eminem might get this. Right. You ain't getting this. And that's not. It just is what it is, folks. Like, we, we can't be scared to say that. Right. You know, Eminem will tell you that. Right? So what he was saying is that, like, when when you think about it, think about the day and time. So from, like, noon to let's say summer months from like 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. is driving the most traffic on social media. Who do you think those are? Let's just look at culture. What are what is hip hop kids doing Sleep. during the summertime? No, oh, no, just, oh, oh. no, just think about it. Yeah, I'm chilling. You know what niggas say? I'm outside, B. Mm hmm. I'm outside, nigga. Yeah. You can't think of one urban demographic where the kids aren't outside in the summer. Mm -hmm. That's when the murders go up, the jackings go up, but that's when all the fly shit is happening. Yeah. That's when niggas' names become legendary on their block. That's when you bag the girl that you nigga, everybody been shooting for, nigga, from the other side. Woo, I got her at the little so-and-so joint. Woo, woo. All these things happen in the summertime in our culture. All the cookouts. All niggas the is outside. Our parents, boy, you better get your ass outside. Mm -hmm. Y'all better go outside and what? Play. Come on, fam. These is African American tropes. Like this is what black people do. Mm. Who's in the house doing the summer months? No shade throwing, no pun intended. Nigga, uh, AC on, kicking it. Big cable, all the channels, all the internet, Life all the motherfucking amenities. Nigga, allegedly, nigga, the the, the cable, the the the. the, the the internet with the, uh, the, the 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 tablet devices. Before the average African-American kid had a laptop and shit like that, statistics show these things is already in the average white home. Mm -hmm. Before the average black family in America 
got internet, statistics show that the average white home already had the internet. And a lot of it wasn't because black people couldn't afford it or didn't want the internet. It was because of the areas in which you lived in. We'll get to you motherfuckers when we, we get, get to y'all. To you, right. We got to hit all these suburban spots in these rural areas to make sure they got fucking Wi-Fi, okay? <laughs> now, they, these are just the facts, and all this is documented. So I say that to say this, like, when Russ was breaking that down, he was like, so a young kid from O Block that here read, gets some shit on the internet. Mind you, these are all undeveloped brain kids. Mm-hmm. Now, he's drinking lean, you're smoking, you, you're surviving a fucking war zone. It's like Chirac. They call it Chirac for a reason. You're surviving all this. You got anxiety. You're going through motherfucking traumas because you PTSD and all this shit, right? And you see a group of people that was just liking your video and streaming it, helping you get out of this situation, furthering you away from it, mm-hmm. turn it back on you because a nigga from the other side or from up the block or from another crew said some foul shit about you or put out some, some, some lame, or put out some information that wasn't favorable. Mm-hmm. I'm not justifying these actions. But you're already talking about kids immersed in gang culture. Take gang out of it. In warrior culture. Mm -hmm. Right? In a violent culture. Emotions high. Drug induced. And now I got a million people telling me I'm a sucker. Or a thousand likes on a video going at me. Mm -hmm. Making fun of my friend that died. What am I about to do? Retaliation. Not to mention, oh, one of you niggas get signed in the process because this happens a lot, and I th- I don't think this is by accident. It's usually like whoever's like these. You get these two local contingencies, right? Your side, but fuck it, me and you. You got your side, I got my side. We both popping. Every artist that come to the town, they check in with both of us. They taking pictures with us. Now niggas is picking side because one of us, one of the, one of our friends on the, on one of these sides got popped. Mm-hmm. It's getting serious now. We up in the ante. Right at that time, Universal come in and throw you about four million. Now you up in the block on me and my niggas. You shitting on us. All the bitches like y'all. You are throwing the dopest parties, nigga. They not letting us in the club because y'all into y'all in the club. You get you you getting the features, nigga, from the rap niggas and shit. They saying little little slick shit that you put them on to that they don't even know is disrespecting my homeboy that got shot. So now it's fuck so and so. This for shits and purposes. Now it's fuck Dr. Dre. Now it's fuck Kanye. Because they didn't pick side. Kanye, Dr. Dre don't even know. Right. But guess who sometimes knows? These labels know. And they'll tell you about it. How to, These labels, will find, you get shot by a nigga, and you tell it, you know, they know what's going on. And then that's the, you know, nigga, they book you on a fucking short date where you, you, you perform right after them. Nigga, these labels is dirty. Empire is one of the worst, nigga. These labels is the feds. Empire has. Allegedly. Yeah, these, la- these, la- these labels all the feds. has motherfucking life insurance policies. I've on heard every that. Every one of them fucking artists and all the artists have died now. Yeah, you know what? Dating funny, back though? to Aaliyah. I nigga. wouldn't. I wouldn't. Would not see Aaliyah. That's not. That's not. That part is uh is is slanted because Aaliyah's uncle Barry Hankerson, he just sold all of. You know how they selling oh, the masters? Okay. He just allowed for all of his record his artists like Tony Braxton. Fucking uh, tank! All them niggas yeah. just got on streaming because of that, yeah. and they was boycotting it because they, you know, he kind of was on some foul shit with his artists or whatever. But they they got him back on streaming. They settled or whatever. It was like a big lawsuit. So he just got on the Empire. He just did that deal. Ali, they didn't have Aaliyah's music when she was alive. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But that's the only one. Nigga, I'm talking about out of like a ten man roster, like eight, they're either dead or in prison. Facing life or the death penalty in Melly's case. Because yeah, Melly's there. What's going on with that case? Everybody you hear talk about that case say he's coming home. Allegedly, there's, I not, just there's, don't no, feel there's like, no evidence. I, I think they jumped the gun because of a, that song. Yeah, that's just such a grimy ass crime. I just don't feel like he did Man, that. The young black kids, there's certain crimes they commit. Mm-hmm. And there's, they're heinous. Killing your best friends there's and then there's heinous trying crime. to stage it. There's heinous, look, man. Niggas, I you know, got tattooed on your face. I know face. niggas that didn't kill so-called best friends, nigga, been to the funeral, nigga, hang, hung out, well, been around everybody, and then you find out, like, yo, nigga, Alpo. That shit happened with Alpo. Like, this shit happens. What I'm speaking to, like, what, what more so I think what you even pointing at is that, like, fam, 
it's just a certain level of audacity now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a certain level of audacity now. Now these these niggas will pop you because you got more likes than them, fam, or because you know it's 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 remedial. But we can't going back to the original theme. We can't forget that Jordans became Jordans not because they was just a dope sneaker. There were other dope sneakers in the eighties and nineties, nigga. Mm -hmm. Why did Jordans become Jordan? Not because Jordan was just so dope and dumb. No, niggas would kill you for your Jordans. Yeah. So first off. Dope boys is the reason why Jordans got popping because you had to be somebody in the street and in the hood to be able to wear Jordans when they first came out because niggas was like, damn, this nigga's worth $100. Mm -hmm. I'll knock this nigga head off. Them Jordans like $80, $90. I'll knock this nigga head off for those. I know, I'll tell you another sneaker that niggas was getting popped for. The Reebok pumps when they first came out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Them shits was dang. I remember them. Nigga, if you wore those shoes in certain areas, you had to be of a certain ilk. Cause you had you might have had to defend those. Yeah. And they might have tried to take them from you, bro. And then you was a real spicy dude, nigga, if you got you some with your girl some. I remember being a shorty looking up to dope boys like this, nigga, like, damn, this nigga gonna he he got some Jordans and his girl got some. And he outside. We just read in the paper that so and so got killed for his Jordans. Yeah. You got your girl outside, nigga, with them things on. Cause niggas know that's so and so girl. Yeah, they ain't finna do nothing. You either had to be extremely fly and cool, nigga. Or like you was a hooper, rapper, like or just that fly nigga that everybody just happened to like, nigga, because all the girls like. Drug dealer. Or bro, you was that nigga getting a lot of money. So or they knew you a, could put a bag or you know, you or you just or you was got definitely, money and you killed niggas at the same time. He was time. a killer. Yeah. But that's why the original Dope Boys was killers. Because you couldn't get that kind of money like an outponent. These niggas were 17, 18, 19 years old. Right, niggas you couldn't, be couldn't in wait Harlem, to go try and Nigga in New York them. City, all around these places, Baltimore, and these niggas, they were where murders was at, and, and be out there fresh with a $30,000 coat on and a $60,000 car, and you don't even got a license. Nigga, they could take that shit from you. You don't got no paperwork on that car. Nobody knows this car exists out here, nigga. Like, what are you doing? Like, I'll take that from you right. and go get it insured. I'm 30. Right, right now. Nigga. Ain't no computers Yo, and shit kid, right now. son your age. Ain't no computers. That's out. what these niggas was out here against. And then you got the niggas out there that was like, nigga, I remember when Frank Lucas had this block. I remember when Bumpy Johnson. These is old gangsters, nigga. So it ain't like some just young squares. The old squares is outside. They wasn't scared of these young niggas. They had to turn it up some. Think about it. It's the evolution of it. And now you got these kids in 2022 that'll pop your head Go to your funeral, shoot that shit up, and then go to your gravesite, nigga, and make a rap video, nigga, about how they popped your head, went to your funeral, and shot that shit up, and your niggas ain't gonna do nothing about it. Come spin the block. Mm -hmm. And guess what we doing in society? Not us, but guess what society is doing? Giving these niggas $10 million advances. <laughs> hey, you can't rap, nigga, but you killed 13 people? Come here. Because we got enough rapidy rap niggas that we signed the bad deals that's still on our label that's writing for us that will write you a hit. Right. I'll make sure they put in your murders and shit there in there too, nigga. But we'll, we'll wrap you. Come on, bro. You look at the FBG duck case, nigga. The Fed said they followed the YouTube shit. These okay. Because Muwap is being implicated as a murderer, right? As one of the shooters. Um, God bless everybody involved. You know, if it, you know, if if Muwap is a free man or an innocent man, free him. But this is what they're saying happened. We all know he got shot basically in the Beverly Hills of Chicago, right? The Rodeo Drive of Chi Town. So, uh, so, Muwap basically goes ahead and, uh, no, go ahead and take care of that. I got this. Muwap, Muwap goes ahead and, you know, um, not Muwap, but the, the feds leaked some information saying that the kid, one of the dudes involved in, in this murder, um, they used a series of Facebook Lives, Instagram and YouTube Lives, uh, a few posts. Um, they didn't even have to go in as far as get text messaging. These young boys went and killed a rapper that had just signed a, a, a major label deal. Um which means there's lawyers involved, 
there's you know multimillionaires involved in terms of investment. They murdered him in a public, very affluent place, um, in broad daylight. And they're able to track when the kite was sent out. And for those of you that's not following, um, kite meaning not a note, but they were able to track when he literally gave, when someone called one of their phones and gave the word like, yo, the boy Duck is up here. All right? So he called one of their phones, said the boy Duck was at the mall, and the feds have video footage that they timed up from when the car went in the old block, and they knew they had a short window to get there to get him. Allegedly, Muwap and the others that assailants are seen on video footage in their own neighborhood. Government footage on their own neighborhood that they probably didn't even know was exist, running like hell down the stairs, nigga, into the cars. Same cars that spotted and seen as the cars involved, all that. And then they have them just on a series of cameras getting to the area. They have them on pings of the cell phone being in the area. It's, I mean, they can match the shit up just like that. It gets to a point where you got to really ask yourself, does crime really pay? No. Depends on the crime. Depends on who's doing it and who's done too. Yeah, I guess that's right. Circumstances, semantics is always what always it, a possibility. Right? Always what it comes down to. I just thought that was nuts, man. The way they, the, the feds broke that down, the way they did it, and then even um, they allegedly say that King Von paid for the hit when that day that we've infamously seen him go to the neighborhood and divvy up a hundred k and platinum and diamond pendants to what you know he was passing on is like guys that he putting on and his niggas and his artists they up next type shit but really it was like nah nigga this is a celebration we got that nigga <laughs> got him bottle yeah, this, and this is what you get for it so I had a question what's up what's with this nigga Nick Cannon and just all these goddamn kids I hope he's okay <laughs> no I'm serious like I'm not even trying to be funny when I see that, it fears me sometimes because I'm like, he's a wealthy man, and I hope he's not aware of something. Nah, do you know what I think it is? I hope he's not sick or anything like do that. Do you know what I think this baby is? What's that? It's him. You can't replace a child, but it's his way of kind of replacing the son he just lost. Ooh, excuse me. No, I think he wanted like a certain amount of kids. Oh, uh, because that's kind of what I did with Jalen. I think he wanted a certain lost- amount of kids. Andre and right. I wasn't even planning on having you like kids in the time yeah, soon no, after that. And then I was like, nah, nigga, I'm I'm having a child. There's somebody that was supposed right. to have a baby right now. Right. Right. Don't feel right. So from a dad standpoint, from somebody well, who's deep. lost a child, yeah. I could see it being yeah. that. But I don't think he's sick. But I mean he could be. Because that shit that his son had, that's just like Generative is hair. You know, I just, you know, it's something I think about when I hear about it. But if he's all healthy, you don't and act good, like somebody. No, who's I know. But if he's healthy and good, which I'm praying mm-hmm. he is, and I'm sure he is, um, I think you know, you worth half a B, bro. You worth half. A I think B, if I had, and you're millions, not even. 50. I got five. I have five as we sit. If I had more, mo- if I had millions, shit. <laughs> Probably, shit if I had millions, fam, I might even have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga might come out the gate with like four of them. Not gonna four bitches real quick. You know what? Like, rich. No, I mean, I might. Like, I'm rich. Dude. I could afford it. <laughs> my nigga fits, fits see, that. You see, have a baby by me, baby. I'm a millionaire. You see somebody. Uh, you see Rocky then got your girl pregnant. I don't want to talk about it. It's too soon. <laughs> Bitch ass. <laughs> Bitch ass nigga. That nigga said it's too soon. It is. Bro, I saw that picture today, like right before you we were gonna do this, before you got here. I was like, yeah, definitely yeah, ask I mean, my nigga. Wednesday we got all about it. We got all about it Wednesday. Your boy going through it. Oh, he wasn't you wasn't happy about that information, huh? You ever lose your bitch? I mean, one that wasn't really mine. What are we talking about, right? No. 
<laughs> what are we talking about? It's Riri. <laughs> you ain't even met Riri. What? That's my baby. Okay. <laughs> And you know, I'll support her through her little, you know, misguided I'll shit. I'll support her through her what? Her little misguided shit. Good lord. I hope I can't wait till we get famous and I hope Riri comes across this episode. What? Just so the niggas get that call like misguided, huh, motherfucker? Yeah, because I'm not <laughs> I'm not I'm not holding her hand. Now if I was holding her hand, all the divine would be in order. <laughs> Instantly, world peace. Do y'all hear this? <laughs> Eradicate starvation. If you and her are together, that's rid, what we, rid the world of all diseases. That's all we need is for you and Riri to hold hand, be hand in hand, yeah. and all that shit to cure something. We all it'll be cured. Get the fuck. Well, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this nigga. Hold on. Was... You always. I'm just kidding, you know. Just being real. This nigga said, "You heard that Benny the Butcher?" It's and, uh, too soon. And J Cole, Have J Cole is wrapping you niggas up right now. About to go see Benny in March. Me and nigga Jones, the Brooklyn Bowl. Like I said, J Cole is washing you niggas up right now. He always has been. Though. I know, but he's on their ass right now. Um, <laughs> Riri and Rocky, huh? Lord, you know. Bullshit. And Nick having number eight. Shit. It had, yeah. like, number eight. I mean, he got a nanny, so it's different. Huh? He got a nanny, so it's different. It and, is and way remember, different. And remember way his first different. kids are Mariah's kids, so that's different too. They come with a nanny there. So. Yeah, there's. A, <laughs> he don't know. I mean, not to say he ain't a good dad, but he don't know the struggles of being a broke dad that, that has to watch your right kids now. yourself, yeah, no. or has to find you got to call babysitters and parents and shit to watch your kid yeah, for no. you when you got to go do something. He don't know those struggles. Not at all. He man. was rich when he had kids. Yeah, he was that's, that's a big, big bro. money when Which he I had kids. Which I ain't mad at him, but. Not at all. I wish I was in the same position because I'd be doing the same shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> I have a whole nanny and all types of shit taking my son to and from school. I wouldn't wake up early having to do that shit. The fuck? If I didn't have to? Yeah, shit. no, I can dig it. Please, all that shit is out of there. I have to. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was gonna say you you haven't heard that song. Mm-mm. All right, I'll let you hear it. Let me get out of here. It's just pretty clever. But you know, I say this all to say this, man. We have to start seeking a lot more like ownership, as well as like, mm, like leadership. So, until we until we do that, man, it's just it's gonna be a revolving door to fuckers. Niggas need to start going that chance to rap a route. Chance had a great plan. Had a great the way he did his whole shit. Russ, same way. You need to really watch the independent route. Do you yeah. don't nobody nobody yeah. needs a label anymore. Labels are starting to labels are struggling or are scrambling to sign you niggas right now because you don't need them at all. You don't need that. We used to need them for distributing, publishing, everything. And we don't need them for none of that shit no more. You can get you a distro kid account for thirty five dollars a year and release all your music yeah. through that and it hits every platform and then you can buy Whatever the streaming, the service that, because title doesn't, is not part of DistroCred. You find what title is part of. You go mm-hmm. get yourself on title, nigga. That's all it is. That's the move. Nigga, I'll tell you a little another secret. Go stream farm, nigga. Go buy a hundred fucking brick phones, nigga. Go sign up to every streaming service you're on, nigga, and go play that album, nigga, for the whole day. Leave that bitch on the charger. Just let that bitch just run through your album. Yeah, it'd be epic. Just saying. 
Record labels That'll are very it. out. Record labels are obsolete. I don't yeah, know what outdated, record labels bro. are even going to be here for here. In the next 10 years, I don't know where record labels are going to be getting right, their money. Podcaster. Yeah, they're going to be signing us. We're going to be the new yeah, they're gonna be podcast. the new rap artists and shit that they're going to have to get on. As long as that bag is right. As long as the bag is right. Because <laughs> really, podcasting, we're in that space where we niggas need the publisher. We need the fucking distributor. We're, we're, we mm. need them niggas. Like, what's fucked up that we're... We're gonna start seeing hella 360 deals with this podcast shit. Oh yeah, bro. They There's gonna it. be so many 360 they deals. They on a podcast and shit right now. Hold on, real quick. Let me get That's why we're about to turn our shit to an NFT. And nigga, Fast. eat a dick on all this shit. Just eyeing them motherfuckers the whole time. Oh, it's like none of your fucking business. That's my late night bag. That's not. That shouldn't even be downstairs. That should be up in the room. Uh-huh. She got Snickers and is. some other shit in there. But yeah, man. Uh. Yeah, the NFT, NFT route is something to, to really do. Niggas need to start too. investing in Ethereum, too. Because if niggas are smart, that's all you can buy NFTs with is Ethereum. They're changing it now, but yeah, you're right. I've just seen some shit where they're changing that. Um, you can buy it with cash now. It don't matter. If Still, Ethereum's going to be the I only get crypto that you can use with it. Yeah, I get that. Some of them stupid-ass fucking pictures and shit are worth fucking bees. Yeah, it's a new it's a new wave, fam. Right. Yacht club monkey and shit. The fuck? It's like the most expensive NFT is like worth like four trillion fucking Ethereum. Damn. What is it? It's a picture. Literally a picture. That's as based with NFT, a non fungible token is just like Pictures and art, music, shit like that. You see a helipad that Floyd's gonna fight on? Who's he fighting now? I mean, they haven't really definitively just announced it. But you hear the, the buzz in the boxing community? Clarissa Shields said she went and spot with him to work on some defense. You know, she got to see him spot for the first time. Cool, Floyd? Yeah, she uh, tweeted, nigga, like it was a religious experience. Mm-hmm. She's like, I can't believe what I just watched right now. And he's been training like with some like young fighters that's up and coming. And then he said, he, he, it's a video. Talk about, it's, hold on, it's a video to YouTube where Floyd just recently, the last couple of days, sparred with this nigga that's like a young, hungry lion. And then he got out that ring and was just like, he's different. Right now, he's different. It was just like, yeah, there's several world champions that he could beat right now. He's like, and I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't supposed to say nothing. I ain't trying to say nothing. He was like, but there's no way he's training. Like, that's how he trains when he fights. He brings in four or five world class dudes, young, up and coming, all different sizes, and whoop their ass, nigga, for a couple of hours. And that's what he was in there doing. Did you see that this nigga fucking Timothy Bradley basically say was uh, Davis is being like pampered? So, this is the thing. <laughs> We know who, who he speaks for. You, Bob Marum, little boy, right? Mm-hmm. But this is the thing about Bradley and them. I won't ever pretend to act like I know as much about boxing as these cats. But one thing I will say is this. Observatively speaking, I see what Floyd did, in my opinion, is started out early, hungry lion, I'm bringing the smoke to everybody, right? It gets to the point the work gets out on you, the film is out. None of the other big names that will make you the money you need or want will fight you, right? So now you got to go up and make it more favorable for them by making yourself vulnerable by going up multiple weight classes to claim these belts. 
I think that a traditional person in Tank's position will stay at that weight class and dominate it for the next 15 years. But I think that what Floyd is grooming him to do is you're going to dominate here, clean this shit up, but there's certain fights and there's certain fighters and certain weight classes that you can match up with. That's just the science of ma- of matchmaking, bro. Right. You can't put everybody can't fight everybody, unfortunately. No. They that's rules against that. Yeah. Everybody can't fight everybody, and everybody don't make a catch weight with each other. There's some fighters that yeah, that would be a dope fight. They'll never fight each other because yeah, it's too much. It's weight not because they're difference. scared of each other. It's too much weight. It's not because yeah, bro. Like one walks around that's naturally okay. at that weight, and one would have to balloon to that weight right. or shrink down to that weight. And you know what I'm saying? It's and just that's killing you, nigga. Come essentially, on, nigga, niggas die from that type of. That's why there's certain fights that have timers on it. Yep. Like hey, well, nigga, you know this dude right here, Earl Spence, don't got Spence, all day to wait Spence on Crawford. Because Earl's a timer gonna bloom, on up, bloom up, bloom up, bloom up, bloom up, like. He can't just keep cutting weight to stay down there. Now, some people speculate that's what Crawford's waiting on. Drain him out a little bit. Make it to where it's harder and harder for him to cut that weight. But that's why Spence put his foot down and was like, yo, this is what I'm doing. I got this fight and this fight. Get your shit together. You could be one of them, nigga. If You're not, right. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm going to the right, next. Nigga. You know what I'm saying? And there, it's See, on record. See, if Fimo left and decided to go where he's naturally the weight class he's supposed to be in. He needs to. Stop fucking Stop cutting playing. weight. Stop playing. Canelo did the same thing. He went up to his natural walk around weight class now. Well, he's in two. Like his, yeah, he's in between but he, both but of his But they classes. say that his natural fighting, like the class that he's kind of fit for right now, mm-hmm. nigga, I think they're saying it's 54, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But look, this is the thing. I think that Charlo fight is going to finally happen. Oh, gonna, it, and it's it, only. It's it, 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 okay, I think so. Yeah, yeah because. Sign, and it's because, be dog. And it's because, like, the Mexican greats. Start calling them out about it. Yeah, you have to fight. Because one of the things I'll say, and I don't don't ever try to speak for no other culture, but one of the things that we all love about Mexican culture in terms of boxing. They fight everybody. Their number one contribution to sports that matter in America, outside of like baseball and shit like that, like, you know, baseball. It's um, boxing. Is boxing. Yep. And I won't go as far as say that they dominate boxing, but. They're a dominant presence in boxing but their their consistent presence in boxing right yeah because latin com- the whole spanish latin community period is huge in well, boxing. i'm talking just spe- I, I get i get i'm just talking specifically the like mexicans mexicans yeah because honestly outside of a few countries or let's everybody's just say, huge let's in say boxing. that continent alone let's say south america let's not even well, say just mexican, it's the same con- okay the argentinians say. are fucking nigga there's there's all them up well the just, americas yeah is big. I'm just saying, like, in more modern times, all national. It's an international sport. It's like the most international sport. Right. But you can't be niggas can't call you a Mexican great and you're not fighting all the great fighters. Let's talk about Julio well, Cesar. Julio, could do that. Like, Julio we could Cesar say that, Chavez. But the but what they're when start, what, a young what they're, Whitaker, what they're exposing is that hey, bro, in America. They're hailing you like you're some kind of Mexican legend and how the Mexican people are just blindly behind you. And we have back a boxing represent, represent, uh, a representing body in boxing. Right. And we have a boxing reputation. Mm-hmm. We have a boxing pedigree. History. And we have a boxing everything. intelligence as yeah. a culture. And we're realizing, like, yo, we like you and all. Like, we, we want to vote. We, we fuck with you. We with you. But why Get you your not? money. But, yo, when you going to fight Charlo? Or one of those Charlo boys. When you gonna fight, fight one of these dudes that that's nice that that so we can get our one up? Right. Yeah. Who are you getting? A, like Caleb Plant he ain't horrible, no, but niggas ain't, ain't asking ain't. for Caleb Plant. Yeah, man. It's just like, bro. Hey, th- when you hear the the way that Plant was talking to him in the fight, I like Plant. I like his personality. I fucks with Caleb. He was talking to him in the ring. He's like, he's like, he's like, you're good, bro. And Canelo was like, he's like, thanks. He's like, he's like, I'm pretty good too. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you. Canelo was like, yeah, you are. And they're just, he's fighting, talking, yeah. asking niggas. And that's why you lost to him. <laughs> yeah, doing stupid shit like that. Because but. if you don't want in there, and the thing is, you also see Caleb Plant, and I'm just a little disappointed. I I'll, I'll be fronting if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. And he tweeted out, thank you to that nigga with that new Bugatti, because you just made more money than you ever made. <laughs> and one of the things he did as a businessman is he priced himself in that fight. Like, nah, man, if you don't want to fight Charlo and you don't want to have to fight one of these this other niggas, price. this is my price. Because the first nigga ticket, he was like, nah, I'm turning that down. I ain't enough money. 
That little couple million, nah, nigga, you gonna you gonna retire? Give me retirement money retire if I want. Me, <laughs> you gonna give me enough money to where now, basically, you gonna pay me for my oh, because I can't beat you on the scorecards. We seen with Floyd, nigga, a, a Mexican judge got nigga disbarred and can't even be a judge no more because she gave it a draw. When every other judge and every other body with two eyes in there, motherfucker was like, even with one eye, was like, yo, this nigga ain't winning not one round. We might can give him one yeah, or two if Floyd, the, the Floyd, the rounds that Floyd took off, but he yeah, still was tagging sense. your ass. <laughs> Those was draws, like, you know what I'm saying? Shit. So it's all that. Canelo's making a lot of money. And what Canelo's doing is the Floyd blueprint in this regard. I've, I became a free agent, and although I don't have a Canelo – uh, Alvarez promotions mm -hmm. to to funnel the money to. What I can do is I can book this fight with Eddie Hearn and just on. I can book this fight over here with the PBC. Right. I can book this fight agent. over here, nigga, with uh, uh, Bob Aram and them. Who got the money? Showtime. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Whoever got the big bag for me, nigga, to fight somebody, I'll yeah, do it. Whoever's got that paper. But that also allows you to duck. And what they exposed is shout out to Fanon Boxing, uh, Blue Blood Sport. And uh, Dante's Boxing Nation, Aki TV, they exposed Champ Side. These are all the boxing channels I get my info from. They all they exposed. Yo, the WBC just made up a belt. So Charlo, so so when Canelo gave Charlo his belt, it still looks like he has the WCB belt, the WBC belt, because they just made a franchise belt. Yep. Which is kind of like what the UFC did for uh, old boy with the BMF belt. belt. Yep. That's kind of where they got that they from. Because they ain't fought for that belt. They ain't been fought for since. Right. That's where they got that from. It's not a real belt. Shit is a fucking vanity. It's a vanity It's an belt. accessory, nigga. It's a, you know what it was? I keep stiffing you on your chance for a title. Here's something. Here goes something. And I'm going to set it up to where you can get a big payday with a big fight. Right. It ain't going to be a title. But here you go. Oh, and if you want the title, you got to. Yeah, he got the title fight. No, no, no. If, no. After that, he got himself. He got it after knocked that. The fuck and out. it's fucked up how they did him. He got it on like three days, four days. No, he got it on like three weeks notice. No, no, eight days or some shit. Yeah, something like that. It, it was, was like eight days notice. It was, it was something. Days. It was days, right? So, but it's like I no, because that's not an excuse. You no, don't listen. have to take that fight. The thing is, is you do because the way this shit's working yeah, in the UFC, you're right. he he's not, not gonna, gonna ever get that, get that chance right. Yeah, right. So you gotta go get a crack at it, and if you do a good showing, or, if you or, or it's win. enough drama, <laughs> if even you if win. you lose, if it's enough drama and right. a good enough showing, then right. it it, it, it kind of propels them to make it another fight, mm -hmm. and so that's what happened. Usman went and whooped a couple of motherfuckers' asses again, and it was like, well, damn. And what he said, what he told Dana is like, look, man, you don't gotta. I just got this from Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan show. He said. He told Joe Rogan, he told Dana, like, look, I know you don't saying that y'all weary. Y'all not going to put all that money behind me. I'm not Connor. He said, but what I want from you is when I lap these motherfuckers, I want you to get, you know what I'm saying? When I pass these, when I, when I run through this division, I want you to give me the opportunity to lap them. That's what his legacy selling point is. Not only am I about to go undefeated on you niggas like, uh, like Khabib Floyd, right? and Floyd, right? But I'm going to lap everybody. I'm going to beat everybody twice. Just so it ain't no yeah, mistake. Ain't no, and yeah. what's going to happen is Usman is going to fight his way into that Conor fight. They're already starting to talk shit to each other and chirp at each other. Because Conor is like, I want the love that Usman's getting. Conor needs the Usman, Usman fight. is like, nigga, I, want the, I want the bread yeah, they both and the that stardom fight. that you got. One of them needs it for different. One of them needs it for that bread and the stardom. One of them needs it because he needs that comeback. If I beat you, nigga, it, it solidifies who they said I was. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Everything I said I was, I am if I beat you. I get your title, and I'm back. Right? I'm back there. Now, I might not ever get that crack it could be, but, nigga, I'm back there. I'm a, Yeah, I'm a champion again. And he's been saying he wants that fight again, but I'm like, bro, I don't think you want Khabib's that Khabib's not Khabib. coming out of retirement. Yeah. It's not enough money. He, he's they on that. They already offered him 100. No, you know, did you hear him? Oh, offered 100 million for he it. He already turned down 100, over $100 million to fight uh, Floyd Mayweather. Oh, yeah. That was his fight. Um, right after the uh, McGregor fight, they won Floyd him. was going to fight him. Yeah. He was like, nah. Some niggas ain't interested in the money. Well, you understand. The 60 to $80 million he's made as a megastar mm -hmm. in his sport with all with his endorsements and all that shit, you go back to Kazakhstan, Russia, where he's from, it's like a billion dollars. Yeah, he's yeah, he's it. 
He don't got. He made that in the UFC, nigga. Yeah. Here in America, he's fighting in New York, LA. He don't got to do nothing. That else. boy took that money home. <laughs> you feel me? He's probably the richest person from their race <laughs> in modern times. And I don't mean no disrespect. I'm not no, trying not to. Be, at all. I, I don't mean no disrespect right. to those it's people just, over there. I think it's funny when you people. say this shit like I'm that. I'm just saying, like in their modern history, because of what they've been through and shit like that, as being oppressed and ostracized from certain parts of Russia, like. He might be one of the richer people in their modern. Because, look, it sounds crazy, but let's just say Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather is up there in terms of, like, richest African Americans. Mm-hmm. He ain't the richest black person by far. No. But when he comes to, like, African, modern African Americans, and she's like, are you just African Americans, period? It ain't been too many African Americans that have amassed over a billion dollars or near a billion dollars. Jay-Z is one of the richest black Americans. He's one of the richest foundational black Americans ever. Magic Johnson. Uh, po- post um, Columbus. Mm-hmm. Magic Johnson's one of them. Magic Johnson, Oprah's. Oh, Oprah. You know what I'm saying? Rihanna, mm-hmm. Beyonce, and fucking people like that. They're billionaires. They've certified a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. All these people, you know? They rank. Jordan. They're on, they're on the list. You feel me? Jordan's a B. Yeah, and like the dude from Mastercard, you know, the back of the day, all these B. different people. It's like, well, no, nah, he close to it. He's still one of the richest. Richest dude. He's a couple people. hundred M's. Yeah, that sucks because after his divorce, you know, it knocked him down to like three, four. He already got knocked down to seven because he didn't own beats. He didn't own beats. Right? That's when he got exposed that he wasn't Monster an owner. Own beats. You know what I'm saying? He got exposed for that, and his. They estimated that his shit would be over a billion dollars, but it ended up, been, like, but nigga, it ended up being like seven hundred. Niggas ain't gonna sign me to no deal hey, that has Hey, that don't name don't on mind it. me, nigga, counting pennies. Like, well, actually, he's not a billion. It's a seven hundred. He's a billionaire, nigga, in my bar, in my books because of that. But I just read some shit the other day where it was like after his divorce, it knocked him down to like four hundred something m's, which is still I'm never nigga. crying for him. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped the album. Or did a movie or some shit like or that. Or see a tour. Or definitely see a tour. You see him doing a Super Bowl joint. Probably called in a favor to hold. Like, yep. Need that. And that's in my city. That what you doing? Dollar check for this what you doing? <laughs> I need that Super Bowl. Well, they say the Super Bowl don't pay you because of the exposure you get. They say you actually pay. You pay for all your flight, all that shit, nigga. They say it's an honor. Like, it's just an a, a entertainment honor. Well, they can keep it. A lot. Of, Rihanna told them to. I need my check. I do these stadium numbers on tour. Fuck do I need your exposure? I'll tell you why. Because if you're... I'm talking about Rihanna. No, I'm just kidding. I know, but that's Rihanna in today's world. But this is why it got to be that. If you were uh, Whitney Houston, who was a star, but uh, it was a pop star even, but hadn't probably all the way 100% crossed up. They didn't have her in Coca-Cola commercials yet and shit like that. That would have been her crossover. That crosses you over. Right. Michael Jackson was already Michael Jackson. He just did some epic shit. Prince just Prince did some was epic already shit. Prince. Yeah, it was epic. But like when you yeah. think about other people that have graced that stage, like I think Brandy has been able to be a part of a performance. Yeah. And what it does for the numbers. Look at what it did for Justin Timberlake's solo career. Oh, right. Cause and the, they bat, yeah, fuck, they tried to fuck kill, Janet kill Janet. But look what it did for his career. Right. Um, the visibility that you get on that stage. Like, bro, I'm going to be honest. They, they should have been had Kanye perform at a Super Bowl halftime. But even at Eminem. I think Eminem has Eminem done one. has. Um, but Eminem wasn't. No, uh, this is Eminem's. I don't think it's his first he's one. Not, it is. I don't think it is. Well, he's only I think been he's a, been featured before. He's only been a part. No, he has. Because remember what they was doing for a while was like three main acts. And they was like doing it like one, he's doing a little medley and shit like that and going Maybe. off. Eminem was a part of one of those. Oh, nigga. Yeah. Eminem was a part of one of those. Because I remember. Oh. You know why? Because I remember him performing Lose Yourself. Mm. And I'm like, nigga, when he goes to L.A. and do that shit, that's going to be dope. But to me, M. I know he's a part of the Dre tree, but he don't fit the lineup. I, neither does Mary. I get it. Yes, I get this. I get artists. the tree, but they're not West Coast artists. What I would have did, honestly, Dre, I, Snoop, and Kendrick. You have enough. Dre, Snoop, and Kendrick. And if you had to have a female representation and you wanted to hit R and B, I would have put somebody like Brandy, or I would have put somebody like um, Keisha Cole. You know what I'm saying? And left it at that. Yeah, because because. Keisha Cole's as big of a star as Mary is because 
Mary, like I'm talking about like well, in terms of like right now. Mary don't have no hits. Mary don't well, have right. no. And, you know what yeah, I get what she's not in terms of relevancy she's not hot right now. Right now. Shit. Right. She's but not relevant. Legacy right acting ain't the legacy same. Legacy acting still got Right. I'm talking about marks. right. She's a big enough star. But I'm talking about to, no, for, from a, a homage standpoint, what I'm Keisha Cole being West from Coast Cali. Homage. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like She yeah. has catalog. She has platinum hits. That's what I'm she saying. She has enough to carry her on that That's stage with I'm the saying. rest of them. That's all. And her connections to Tupac. Right. So, and I then, did that. And then you're like. And then Brandy, the same thing. Brandy has connections to Death Row and all that type of shit. Snoop Dogg's her biological first cousin. Yep. She's from that era. Like, yeah. nigga, I want to be down is a West Coast classic, nigga, that hit the world. Yeah. Like, that's all her. That, that's a West Coast sound. Like, they should have, you know, I would have just seen that more. Like, now I get Mary got some hits and shit that came out on West Coast, where, on Interscope. Like, and she's with, not a West Coast. She's from fucking New she York. She got hits with Dre. Like, I get that, nigga. But she's got, nigga, a lot of people got hits for Dre, with Dre. A lot of R&B artists from around the fucking country have hits with Dre. But more they hits. signed to Death Row. Or Shug's management or whatever it was. That's real. I guess. I, like I said. So, I, I mean, I get that's what it, they reached to me, me on Me and you feel more the same. The no, we do. Because, like, like, Eminem, to me, I'm like, you saved him for when they when y'all in Detroit. Yeah. And then it's on it's it's the onus on him to shine that light on Detroit artists. Like, you bring out a, a slum village for a little bit, and you bring out some of these different people, Fat, fat Cat and all these type of niggas, and, and, and let them rock and do your thing. You know what I'm saying? You bring out an OB. But and all yeah, Eminem, he don't fit the lineup. Just like Mary don't fit the lineup. Now, on a tour I standpoint, that's a great I tour. Get, I know, but I get why they're on the like lineup in terms of like the their songs stature. they're on. But and it, their stature. Yeah, yeah. Like I get Eminem, I get Eminem doing halftime. Right. I get Mary doing halftime. Right. I get uh, all the rest of them. I respect Kendrick doing halftime, but based on the criteria, typically, he ain't there yet. I would love to see J. Cole do that shit. But if we going off them solo, it'll be Drake first. It would be Drake first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It'll so be, it'll it's definitely just, be Drake first. It's just yeah. a weird, like, you know. How has Drake not got a fucking Super Bowl? I'm sure he's probably turned him down. Somebody's had to have called him by now. Yeah. All the fucking I mean, if, hits, if Rihanna's got all, turned yeah, it down, they called Drake. He's turned down. I guarantee he's turned it. He just probably has no interest in doing it. What they fucked up is, and they probably won't ever give it to him. Chris Brown a murder of Super Bowl halftime too. Bruh. Because he makes stadium music. Yeah. Nigga Bruno could. Bruno's done it. Oh, uh, Bruno did do it. Yeah, and he did he done it once by himself and once with Beyonce. Mm-hmm. But think about that. Like, it's I mean, who else? Who would be like a odd choice, but it'd be dope for a Anderson Super Bowl? Anderson Pack. Anderson Pack for this one. No, yeah, that's dope. Anderson Pack could have been on there. That's what I'm talking about for this one. To give it a new the feel, Oxnard too. Kid. And they have somebody new. You know who they could have had Funk on there? Feel, all type well, of I guess they did have thing. Kendrick for the new. They, they did, got but Kendrick I'm just saying, like, new. as a as to replace Eminem, you could have put Anderson Pack in Eminem's place. Added another LAM element to it, another Cali element to it, another dope element to well, it. See, my thing is, too, is like, I get it, it's not the Bay, but like, you could put like E forty or somebody on E-40 that. E forty could should have been on there. E forty's not just a Bay artist. E forty's California. Or if you were gonna do L A SoCal, you should have just been like, we're gonna do Snoop. Why Cube ain't on it? It's Dre. I was about to say in Cube, nigga. How Cube ain't on it? How did Kendrick? You could have left it N W A family. Yep. And maybe threw game on there. Yep. Because he's kind of like an extension of that nigga. He's repped it, nigga. He deserved it. He tatted it on his body, nigga. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, it don't. There's a lot of people who make more sense. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the biggest game fan because sometimes game do shit that I don't, and say shit that I don't really rock with. Mm-hmm. But talent-wise, I'm a huge fan of his. Yeah. I'll say this. Game better be on that stage. Mm-hmm. We're going to see a lot they, of people They better on pull that game. Stage. They better pull game. Be they better pull shit. game on that stage. Cause I know, I, if I, if know if I know anything, you know Kendrick gonna is going to pull some of his artists out. You know who we are going to see? 50 going to be there. You better, I'm just saying. They might reunite on that joint. They might have 50 in game on that stage. Oh, hate it or love it. Hate it or love it on that joint. And I mean, which is still kind of weird because I, I, that's just where you being a hip-hop nerd gets in the way. I know 50 wrote that record. And 50's from Queens. But it's just like, you know, still Dre. 
I used to tell niggas like, bro, you don't hear who wrote that record. Mm-hmm. I was like, imagine Jay Z rapping that. Nigga, Jay Z has a whole album produced by Dre. Well, I'm just saying he could go do one of them songs. He's wrote records. Mm-hmm. That's why I was telling niggas in the verses. I was like, dog, because Snoop even kept it real. Like, he came, he came out and recently said it, and, and on the podcast, like, I'm not gonna lie, fam. When, because there was like, what was it like when Jay Z came to the studio? He come out west. He missed New York, and he wrote. Still Dre for Dre. He wrote his verses. And Snoop was like, no, he wrote the record. He wrote Dre's verse. He wrote my verse. And he wrote the hook. Yeah, I think we've told that story on here before. You know what I'm saying? It's just artists, no matter who it is, that get in that pocket and write for other artists, when it's time to perform it and it's known, like, is it really, does it hit the same as what I'm trying to get to? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Some shit thing, it's that, that like, it, it, the, the record might suffer from it and its performance after a while because of that. Not all of them, but some of them, it seems like it do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just kind of nuts. We'll see. There's supposed to be a lot of shit coming out this week or uh, this month. They say Kendrick's supposed to be dropping. Mm. We'll see. What your anticipation is on that? I don't ever anticipate Kendrick albums. I'm not a, I'm not a huge, I'm Kendrick, not a huge fan. Kendrick fan. Bro. I know he, he could rap, bro. I'm not. I'm no, not, I'm not taking from it's his not ability. talent derivative. It's yeah, just, it's not. Yeah, my dislike. Honestly, not bro, dis- I don't know what it is because I don't dislike I don't him either. at all. You know what it is? You don't be saying shit that's wrong. Do you know what it is? It's for me, not for you. No, just because I, I want to see if it's, it's the same. them fucking little accents that he does and his the way he changes his voice sometimes and all that shit. Well, to me, that's not original. And to me, it's I think, Eminem-ish. I think one of the annoyance of it is it, I could hear the shady in it. I could hear the cannabis in it. Mm-hmm. I could hear the uh, what's the old boy from the West Coast, nigga, uh, from um, Slaughterhouse, nigga, uh, uh, Long Good Eye. I could hear when I first heard Kendrick, I thought he was crooked. Mm-hmm. I dead ass thought he was crooked, bro. And for a long time, I was telling him, "It's like, bro, you don't think this nigga sound like crooked eye? Like he kind of raps just like crooked Razz Cass. Right, yep. Like I've heard that before. So to me, maybe it was I didn't have the shock factor that a lot of the younger cats. Yeah, had. he doesn't. He doesn't have. But he don't. <laughs> he don't have that J Cole wow factor to me. But what happened to me is Kendrick can go. Don't get I, See, his least praised album is one of my is my favorite. What that we gonna be all right? Shit. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, that's one of my favorite songs. And and not just that song. That uh, what's that album? That damn album. A lot of his fans then they didn't like damn. You know. But to me, I'm like that's that to me that's good. Like it wasn't so choppy in that way. And and it, but this is what I was gonna say to add to that. And not because I don't want to sound like we shitting on Kendrick. That's not what we're doing. Kendrick deserves to be in his legendary status already. He does what he does. Whatever. Maybe not, cause I we could talk about that, cause I think a lot of people goaded him too early, mm-hmm. Way and too like early. put him like in a low, legends and top fives too early. But whatever, right? Um, that's another conversation for another day. With me, what I find with Kendrick is the diversity lack. Like he don't check all the boxes. He don't. He don't. He's dope as fuck at he what is. he does. He is. But he after a while, it can drown out because it's just like. Okay, he I get have, it. His albums, like, it's just not, it's not cohesive to me like a J. Cole. And then he has this cult like following is. that, like, overplays everything. Oh, the production. Oh, man, the way he rap. Oh, the shit that he's talking about. He nobody's talk, the same Nobody's talking about that. He raps the same a lot. A lot of his records sound alike. Right. And it's just like, bro, almost everybody, and that, let's be everybody that checks his box. Mm-hmm. Raps this about the same and, shit. And like, and let's be and let's be real. Like, swimming pools wasn't a great song. His breakout, his breakthrough hit song wasn't some dope ass shit. But it's the one song that's not forced in a parting social social setting. Right. It vibed. It fit in the right. playground on the playlist. 
when I hear them play, we gonna be all right in certain records in the club and shit like that's a DJ just just showing this, up, yeah. just being in his hip hop bag. Yeah, because that's not like Kendrick's hot. You, most people I'm when you drop when you drop that, we gonna be all right. That ain't even a song. Ain't nobody, nigga. That don't make the crowd get and, high. Nigga, and one thing high. I will say too with West Coast DJs that I noticed is they'll it's almost like. We got a lyric, a lyrical dude that that no one could deny that he's lyrical and he's right here from California and shit that like, I've heard niggas from LA shit on Nas, mm. Hove, and other East Coast lyrical rappers they for. They praise him for. They'll give Kendrick a pass. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, cause I get it. He's from their backyard. Not even just that. You understand what he's talking about. That yeah, that's real. So you you know what a court order is. You know what chopped cheese and shit like that is. Like you know what hoagies and shit is. A West Coast kid, they only their introduction to that a lot of that shit is like the Cosby show mm -hmm. and slang and skits from records and videos and you know what I'm saying? But a, a true kid from the West Coast that grew up in this modern west coast that we live in especially like non like san francisco non seattle non like cultural hubs like that like median cities and shit the average kid in las vegas don't know what the fuck a good cold cut do because they got porter subs and subway right as their backdrops they have corporized they have corporations Delis that have mimicked shit. that culture to, to introduce it to them. So it's like, what would be that on the West Coast? There's certain things on the West Coast that you might not necessarily find. Um, it's kind of hard to think. Okay, maybe let's say tacos. Maybe on the West Coast, and I'm still stretching because the tech, you know, the South is going to have something to say. The Midwest is going to have something to say. box, I guess. Well, no, but what I'm saying is that that's like. That's a chain. How am I trying to say this, bro? Like. What's the, the food or the thing that we... Okay, I do got it. Ranch. Mm. The uses of ranch dressing. Mm -hmm. The way West Coast kids put ranch on pizza right. and would get French fries with ranch, that's not a Midwest, Southern, East Coast thing at all. Mm -mm. Like, nigga, on the East Coast, nigga, there's a lot of places you'll go and get chicken wings and they don't even serve ranch dressing. Yep. Like, what the fuck you need ranch for? Blue cheese. Nigga, yeah, you got some blue cheese over there, nigga. We got some hot sauce. We got right. some... But why would you need ranch dressing, fam? Like, we don't got salad. <laughs> but on the West Coast, nigga, niggas use ranch for everything. Right. All type of shit. Uh, mozzarella sticks. Not until nigga. I got to the West Coast that I know there was a difference between ranch dipping sauce and ranch dressing. Well, that's just it. It wasn't. Because there's no difference. Where no, it we wasn't. From. Because they made ranch dressing. dipping sauce. That's just corporations being stingy. They made, just like they made buffalo wing sauce. Because they, they realized niggas was using red hot to make buffalo wing sauce. They just start. They just, okay. We'll add the we'll vinegar. We'll take red hot. No, we'll, we'll add the vinegar, vinegar that you guys yeah. put in it. Yeah. Because that's what you do. You take the red, the hot sauce and the then vinegar, the vinegar yeah. and then you flip it. You know, some people put a little flour, all that type of shit in there. Well, they took that, put it in a bottle already. And what what did they do when they realized that kids take peanut butter and jelly and mix it? They put it in the same jar. Come on, fam. I'm so tired of them selling shit to us. Every <laughs> rebranding re and reselling. That's because it. you know it has a cultural origin. Or origins too Like You used to have to know what You have to study your slaves To know what to sell them mm -hmm. Or to know what to You know what I mean Because once you start paying Sharecroppers Which is another form of slavery Was a legal form What are they like? Right You know what, what I'm saying? What do they like to eat? What do they, they, they dress? Bro Like Certain shit should never be expensive But African American The fact that culture The fact that barbecue is expensive shit, No that's what I'm saying when you go out to order it and shit like that, yeah. it's expensive. Because it was cheap food that black people used to make and popularize, and then you got corporations that comes in and be like, oh, we'll sell it back to you. <laughs> Think about it. It's the same way with music. Every music exec turned on, turned down hip hop. Yeah. Every every record label turned down and shitted on hip hop first. Until they saw the rust. Now nigga, they're the gatekeepers of the shit. Yeah. Rush should have never let them in. It's a cycle. BT. Yeah, Bob Johnson. Should never let him in. Now you got let me. Now you comment. got all these different outlets 
that don't represent the culture, mm -hmm. are invested in the culture, don't give nothing to the culture, makes millions of dollars off the culture. It's like the boy Act just uh, exposed on his page the relationship between the Kardashians and TMZ. And why, and he said he apologized to Ye because he's like, man, I'm a Ye fan, but it, they got it look, and they even used his clip on their shit. They got it looking like Kanye, like even academics is saying that Kanye is out here spreading rumors right. about Pete Davidson and doing and being the jealous lover and the stalker and all that shit. Right. And nigga, that's all you see. You like, damn, yeah, bugging. But what he, you know, he's privy to right. the shit, and he found out. He's like, bro, it's not like that at all. Like the bitch, Kim is really tripping and doing some shit, and she knows that those social those outlets we built this empire and we have these relationships because this thing is less about what that woman said about hey if you really are an ally tell us what's going on in the rooms where we're not there these back room deals mm. that they'll never make with beyonce right they'll never make with rihanna so that's why black entertainers and shit have this fuck you type attitude towards the media and shit like that with because then they're not allowed to and what he was saying jason lee has his own shit that's bubbling so Kanye got a relationship with him, a black dude. That's who he sits down and do interviews with. That's who he gives his leaks to and shit like that. So what he exposes, you think TMZ likes that? Mm -mm. So right there in your home, we have our number one golden goose. We're going to protect her at every turn. Mm -hmm. And we're the biggest. And you go tell media takeout your version and watch we step on it. And they use their platform to take media takeout stories right in sources right from Kanye to be like, yeah, man, I had to call five people in the family and some friends to find out what my daughter's birthday party was. I paid for it. It was planned that we were having it together. And then I was also going to have a separate party with her with other family, which tells me reading between the lines, oh, you know, y'all don't fuck with all them? Okay, I know what that means. With his Chi Town family, right? Okay, that's cool bet. It don't matter. He's going to do that. They wiped the story away by TMZ posting a uh, rebuttal, and they just said, they just flat out said it like fact, like, oh, Kim never, ever th uh, kept Kanye from saying it. So now, okay, oh, now wow. now, now, Carl, now uh, Kylie's lying. Now Chris Jenner's husband or boyfriend, wherever the dude is lying. Now uh, Travis Scott is lying. Now, all these people that was there, that was like, yeah, no, nah, the nigga Pete was here. We thought it was kind of weird, but it's Kanye's right. party. So right. it's like, we thought maybe he ain't tripping because they know that Kanye's not tripping. It ain't like he's been trying to fight this nigga. He's not blowing Kim up. He's Kanye fucking West, bro. Right. Like, I, I mean, he might even still be hurt a little bit. Bro. Right. He's Kanye fucking West, bro. So is it's that going on. You know what I'm saying? And like, this new bitch hella bad. She's so bad. And my new bitch, man. This new bitch bad as fuck. So, yeah, that's that, man. It is what it is. It's been another episode. You know what I'm saying? Another motherfucking episode of the You're Always Talking shit, shit Podcast. Go ahead. You're supposed to say it right on time, bro. Hey, man, we all about dualities right now. <laughs> fuck that. They can be motherfucking. They can change what the fuck they want to be. We're that's about another dualities. episode then. of the Always Talking Shit Show. Hold on. One side note. All the parents out there, let your kids curse at school. If your kid gets in trouble and they deny him education in terms of sending him home for cursing, right. he or she, I want you to tell them, fuck out of here. Well, fuck you. Because a kid, eight, nine year old, can go to school and decide he wants to change his pronoun. Yeah. So he can say shit. Yeah. I'm your Shub host, Doc On. It's your boy, King Magic, man. We out of here. You always talking shit, show. Fuck how you feel. Always.
Well, it's a bit of...